Nothing to show. Right. No one else is bothered turning up yet. We started at the beginning. Kevin's <laughs> not coming in today. I get. I, I bet he's gonna pop in like any old time. Have he's he's busy catching comic books. Yeah. I don't know. I found out a couple decades ago. The minutes comic comics become my business. I lose my love for them. So I'd rather have them be my passion than my paycheck. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Got to, if you're trying to make your business out of it, it's hard to separate it, isn't it, I guess? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the people that were coming in and buying them, 99% of them were so stupid, I just wanted to yell at them. Oh. Oh, well. It just, then there was a lot of college kids because I was off a of college campus, but, you know. Mm. I don't know how to put it. They they weren't know it alls. They weren't know nothings, but they didn't have a clue. <laughs> didn't appreciate it. Just like you, yep, I'm gonna pick some up. <clears throat> a lot of the get rich quick uh, frat boys and stuff like that. Mark just said he's gonna be a bit late today. Some guy selling signed books apparently, so he's trying yeah. to pick them up. Those. Uh, Sadly, a lot of bigger names have to supplement their incomes doing the side stuff. Signing and selling. Yeah. They got to they gotta hustle. Yeah. But it's always been that way in the art world, in the creative world. It's always a hustle. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Well, and then you think the richest people in the world contribute so little to the world. Like a lot of them, maybe their great grandparents did or something like that, you know, and then they inherit all this fucking money. And there are just yeah. so few people that contribute, contribute to society. You know, there aren't people like uh, Jonas Salk who cured polio and then said, give the cure to the world. Don't make me rich off of it. Just give it to the world. Yeah. You know, make enough money. Nowadays, to be, they'd be selling it at 10,000 pound a shot or something nowadays, wouldn't they? Yeah. And that's the kind of guy that went, hey, I get paid well as a doctor. I'm fine. You know, I get paid well as a clinician. I'm fine. You know, that's what we need. Yeah. And these people build internet startups or whatever that are going to ram in and shut me off you know of course all right you created something that's awesome you benefited from something that's awesome is it worthy of you being a billionaire no mm. no especially these young tech kids it's like great you know now you don't know what to do with yourself well, and they're i mean they're good ones i'm not sitting i'm not it's not a broad stroke but it covers a lot of them okay. You can hear me all right, bro. Huh? You can hear me, okay? A little bit of an echo there. Okay. I'll try, I'll try, I was sort of if I could see if I could have two cameras going at the same time. I don't know if I can. Hey, you got to hold your mic up a little bit there. Further it goes down, the more I hear your tummy girl. Yeah, I wasn't talking on this originally. So if it's. Uh... Shut up. And ding dong oh, nice. bell check multiple times that you know he's on at four o'clock because I checked multiple times because I knew we were off for another week or two. <laughs> so bell checked and Bill has to come in fashionably late. Of course, he's probably got a customer as we speak, so he's up to his eyeball. Don't know how Neville's feeling. No, can Johnny. you hear me now? You sound great. Oh, you can hear me now. That's all I was asking, mate. <laughs> I'd ask yeah. about four times if you could hear me. <laughs> I wonder if I can. Yeah. I've got this one, and I wonder if I could use that for showing comic books. But I don't know if how you can set up. I might have to try and log on on a different computer or something. When you came I through and said, one. "Can you hear me now?" It was perfectly clear. Before that, it was dead air. Yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't looking at your lips moving, so I wouldn't be fooled by that. And, but he's got that resounding, booming British voice that just needs to be yeah. on the adverts all around the world. 
Uh, See, I can blow smoke up your ass too. Yeah, yeah. I don't listen, mate. I just, I just switch off. <laughs> I just, I want to pay you to recite my poetry. Oh yeah, okay, I'll uh, happily do that. <laughs> Except the really vulgonic shit stuff. Oh yeah. Turtle glurs. I'd do it. Now we'll listen to it. Because <laughs> again, I can have pure entertainment with that, but if I write serious, I just I have an utter disdain for my audience. I just do. Because boy, that crowd, <sighs> that that crowd of poetry people the artsy fartsy type that are like poetry audiences oh my god <laughs> the snobbery that goes around there yeah how's your and mom doing it, huh how's your mom doing now yeah she's all right she's putting on a real good game face with everything going on so She just knocks the snot out of you. I mean, you know, firsthand when it hits younger people, it knocks them for a sideways loop, and then you think double their age. And yeah, you know, makes sense. I mean, my mom's a tough old bird, but hell, some of the toughest people I ever knew in my life, like my eighty some odd year old um, great grandma, when I was a kid, kids in the alley shooting off BB guns. Now, the little ones are running around. This little old lady in her house dress ran out there, tracked this kid down, and beat him with his BB gun. Took it away from him, smashed it against the garage, broke it, and was like, don't you shoot towards these little kids. You know, you know better than that. That old bro, that, that tough old bird, you know, that woman was an this inspiration. This is really weird. Forever. This is really weird. That's really weird to get on here. I just popped, I tried to open up the stream again in another window to, to use my other microphone. And Bill's in, somehow it's sent the wrong, somehow Bill's clicked onto the wrong link and he's sitting here in the, the, the comic book box hangout link from last night. <laughs> wrong link, Bill. You went up too high. <laughs> Let me just tell him. But yeah, my great grandma. Bill, can you has... hear me? Bill, can you hear me? Fuck's sake, this fucking computer. Can you hear me, Bill? Can you hear me? Yes. You're in the wrong link, mate. Okay. You're not in the right link. You're in the wrong link. Yeah, you're in the wrong stream. Yeah, you've gone up too high. You've gone up too high, I think, in the in the chat window. Go there to the lowest link. I'll post it again if, if you can't, if you don't come up in a minute. Yeah. But yeah, oh, well, my great grandma had like nine kids or six kids or so. I don't know. Took care yeah, of like did. kids. She took care of like nine kids, but during the depression, she'd do haircuts for extra money. And then take the hair and stuff pillows and comforters with it and quilts and things and then make money. Yeah. That. Just a resourceful little bitty. Anytime yeah, I thought I was a tough Marine, I thought I was a pussy next to that old woman. <laughs> Doing know, haircuts is better than what some people probably did in that time. Yeah. I mean, she may do. So I said, every yeah. time I talk about being tough, I think in a lineage of women I come from, and I thought, I'm a big pussy. I didn't squeeze out no babies. I didn't put up with the shit they had to put up with. Yeah. And all the tough ones, I mean, my dad was military. My grandpa was military. My other grandpa was military. Their dads were military. Hey, Bill. Welcome to the real world. Howdy. And and so I'm here. My friend Christiana is is here. Okay. She just dropped into the. <laughs> hey, studio. Christiana. Hey. And, and nice to meet you. Ray, this is Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Kyle. I like this shirt, Kyle. 
I didn't know you were an Animaniacs fan. I love that on you, dude. Yeah, my daughter got me this for Christmas. Why are you on here you, twice, Gray? Huh? As I said, I'm trying to try this camera. Oh, you're trying to See, like a show with video. It's like video show comic books nice. at the same time. Oh, wow. Uh, Creep nice. show. Nice. Dude. We went to, I went with my dad, Windsor Park Mall. To, really? They had, they had like a little con, yeah. a mini con inside Windsor Park Mall. So it was either Walter Koenig or George Takai there. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I remember that's what my dad thought. Oh my it's gosh, that's show. great. That, and yeah, so, yeah. so the cover, of course, is by uh, Jack Kamen, who, who was a famous mm -hmm. uh, EC artist. Oh, oh, not that one. That Okay, that's not... Oh, that's the new creep show comic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought it was the I thought it was the one from the movie, but yeah, Jack came uh, and did the cover for the uh, creep show and the uh, poster for creep show, and uh, I think he did some of the interior art too for the graphic novel, but I can't remember. Uh, I, I know Wrightson did an awful lot of the artwork in that, but. Uh, I like your your Batman pajamas, Gray. Those are really cool. Cheers, mate. Yeah, they are cool. That's I just think it was worth trying to read the Creep Show for people to see if we've got nothing else to talk about. Oh, that's great. We could do the voices. Oh, that's great. <laughs> no, that's uh, that would be uh, the Crypt Keeper, actually. Yeah. Not very yeah. good, is it? So, so what's weird is on the on the TV series, he never talks. And he's always like, uh, just kind of a mime, I guess. Uh, but it's like, oh, look at those candy bars. Oh, instead of Mars, it's Galaxy. That's funny. Or Milky Way, it's Galaxy. That's funny. We have Galaxy. We have a Galaxy chocolate in the UK. Oh well, maybe that's maybe whoever drew that was British. British, uh, maybe. It's not uh, the same color. It's not the same. So three fifths of the group that are normally on the show are British, and then Kyle and I are the two Yanks. Yep. You know, uh, Kyle, you and I, Kyle, you yep. look, look at this. Look at the screen. You and I are the two Yanks. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, when it takes two to yank, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if you yank twice, it's masturbation. I didn't say yank twice. Sorry, I said I'm it takes sorry. two to yank. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Christiana is a good friend of my friend Jim's who died last year. And I think I told you about that, Kyle. It was really sad. Um, but uh, uh, Christiana and I met at Jim's memorial, which I had for him last year. Uh, I did it with our friend Sarah Beth. And we did it downtown uh, at a really. Hey, Mark! What's up, brother? Hi, guys. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good doing all right? Hey, Christian, how's it going, buddy? Um, but uh, but no, uh, we met at J Jim's memorial and where we screened Rocky Horror Picture Show because Jim was the Rocky Horror Picture Show guy for San Antonio. He kind of ran, ran things. He never got paid for it. He should have, but, but uh, he basically ran things. And Christiana uh, was also um, one of the geeks that, that would act out everything. And so she, she's younger than me. So she came probably 10 years after me, but we became friends after, uh, after Jim's Memorial. So uh, I, I love that cover. I love so that cover. Should I just recite every line from the movie while we're sitting here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, no, 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 no. How no. do you do? Uh, she you met uh, my yeah, baseball yeah. handyman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, electric you chair cover. Thought you were the He's getting his mobile man. phone charged at the same time as being electrocuted. That's a nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Very great. Don't that's get strong nice hands by the way I look. Don't that judge a nice, book by his cover. Nice, uh, nice comic rack. I'm uh, not we, much we, of a we, man we, by the light. By, the day, but, uh, but by night, I'm one of the children as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dude, what, what a shame that, that he can't really do much these days because he's such a talent, and, and it's just a shame that he had such a massive stroke. Yeah. yeah. But, well, uh, Richard O'Brien's still decking around and just as spry as ever. Well, yeah. My damn mom. Yeah. But... Is he really? 
Yeah. Dude, that's fucking old. Sorry, Janet. I'm kidding. But, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well done, Bill. <laughs> yeah. I love <laughs> Janet. I don't, I don't mean anything. I, I'm just saying, I didn't real. I, you know, I didn't think he was old enough to be our parents is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but, uh, how's your mom? She's all right. Really? You didn't say that with a lot of gusto, gusto. Well, she's run down to no end, putting up with a lot of shit, trying to keep up with life. Oh, nice. That's pushing 80. Cool. Oh, that's nice. Is that recent? Great. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, an old point. I mean, a recent pickup. Or, or... Oh, let, uh, put it down a little so I can see. That's oh, okay. okay. Oh, that's old. Oh, that's old. I don't know why I thought it was. Is that a... Is that a uh, is that a Bernie cover? Yeah, it's Bernie Wrightson. Yeah. Oh wow, it's beautiful. I love that. I love that. Reading it right now. I nearly finished the first story. 1971. Can't bother show anymore. <laughs> Bernie's title could not have been more apropos, Master of the Macabre. Well, he was Master of the Macabre. That's one. Yeah. But uh, so we've had we've had a crazy kind of week here. We um, or weekend and and week. Everything's going good. Um, I'm trying to think. I was going to tell y'all something, but now I forgot what it was. Um. We got a raw uh, Secret Wars number eight in that we're going to sell. Um, trying to think what else. And that, of course, is, is important because in, in some respects, it was the first appearance of Venom. I mean, that's debatable. Sure. But, you know, it was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, it came eight months after the, or six months after the, Series that popped up, but they gave it the alien symbiote history. Yeah, right. Was always intended to be a uh, a symbiote when he got it. Whoever gave it to him in the first place, whatever right it gave it to him in the first place, was it always the intention that it was going to go bad? Does anyone know? I don't think so. Oh, considering yes. they paid two hundred dollars to a fan who wrote it and said Spider Man should have a black suit, so they got him a check for two hundred dollars and said, "Can we have the idea?" And they said, "Yep." Yeah, and, and he he kind of he kind of regrets it now in, in a way, but not a lot. I think Scotty thinks you're in a casino, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a casino. Yeah, let me let me go let me go play the slots real quick, and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> no, I, it, does, it does look a bit like a casino. It's actually a comic book store, and uh, yeah, it. But yeah, I, I would love to love it to also be a casino. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Of course, we we'd get. You know, shut down right away because we don't allow gambling in San. Well, supposedly we don't allow gambling. There are all these. Well, games. I get, I can make a young Sheldon joke, but you have to be familiar with the show to get it. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, well, you know, I, I understand it's a good show, and all. the show I'm watching right now from CBS is Ghosts. Have you guys watched that? That's great. Yeah. It's really yeah. I know well, the British version, but I yeah, don't really bother with it. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. It comes from the UK version, but but I, I just really, I really a comedy. Yeah, it's a comedy, and and it's about a couple that own a, a bed and breakfast. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and it's you know I really <laughs> okay, Scotty, come on down so you can you can make it okay for me to uh, run this place like a casino. Thank you so much. Thank Annie you. Potts. Annie Potts I'm plays just, the grandma on Young Sheldon. And oh, she, she runs, she's just wonderful in anything yeah, she can. She runs a laundromat down there in Texas, and half the back half of the building's an illegal casino. Yeah, and 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 is it is it she in love with Wallace Shawn on the show? Yeah. Who I think is he? I mean, well, the guy, the guy was. I, if I'm not mistaken, he and Ben Stein both worked in the White House or something at one time. And then people thought he was such a uh, wacko and, and individual that he became an actor after that. 
And of course, his most famous movie is not Princess Bride, like people might think. It's My Dinner with Andre, which which was basically him sitting down with someone that he deemed fam- well, he was famous in his own right, but they had dinner together, and it was just a content. I don't know if you'd call it contentious, but it was just a, a weird situation. I loved it. I loved it. I loved Wallace Shawn. I, I have not watched Eva movie. Yeah, he's fantastic. Oh, Princess Bride, really? I'm sure Mark has seen it because he has kids. I've never heard of it. What, never Mark? Of it, never. Oh, wow. Yeah. You need uh, to see that. The, um, the, 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 my wife and my daughters watch what I call girly movies together. Well, that... Well, would you, Christiana, would you call it a girly movie? I wouldn't really. Uh, Princess Bride? It's got a princess in it, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, I think she's siding with you guys. Yeah. I, yeah. Come on now. The clues in the name, Bill. The clues in the name. Well, well, and not only that, it's kind of a rom com if you really think about it, too. I oh, know, I've not seen it. You know, but I've yeah. got films like that. Now. I've it's not seen. Actually, I've not seen Goonies that everyone says you should watch. I've never bothered watching that. Uh, Stand by me. I never bothered watching that. Legend. I've never watched that either. Never ending story. Labyrinth. Yeah. I haven't watched any of them. Yeah. Never got. Tim Curry was bothered. brilliant in Legend. Yeah, of course he was. Tim yeah. Curry playing the devil. Well, oh it, I've been, you know, but what's sad is is that you don't even get the sense of Tim Curry in it. I mean, because of all the makeup and the costume and everything, he he's so good that you don't even know it's him, which is weird to me. But, uh, and he was also, um, yeah, it's the laugh. You're right. Christiana said it's the laugh and that, that does. Yeah. And I, I loved it, you know, but you know, I like, I, I, honestly, I like him in anything. You know, he, what I thought the funniest and weirdest thing he did was uh, he and Gary Cole were um, uh, in the Family Affair remake or remake of the show. So he took the, the role of Sebastian Cabot as the the butler and um, and Gary Cole yeah. the role of, um, what's his name, uh, Brian Keith. Yeah, I've never so, seen that or heard of that either. So yeah, you're losing, so you're losing the Brits, mate. You're losing the Brits. I've got a clue what you're talking about. I don't, I don't want to lose the Brits. <laughs> I've been watching. I've been watching the American version of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency on Netflix. Rewatching oh, it. Oh, there are two versions. Before. I didn't even know. I didn't know there was a British version. Yeah, it's a BBC uh, Dirk version. Dirk Gently. Which is decent. I thought they were all yeah. the same version. They're no, two different not. versions. Are yes. you sure? Oh, I thought they were all the same. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, huh? No, there's two seasons oh, of Elijah one Wood, American Elijah one. Wood is in the American version, and he's not in the British version, I guess. Who? Who? Elijah Wood? No, he's not in the British version, no. Okay, okay. Now, I will I will tell you, most, most of the shows that come from British shows, most of them are the British version is better. However... I will tell you this. I totally think that Life on Mars, the American version, was better. And and it didn't run as long, but uh, yeah. Know, you exactly. that before, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It was Man About the House. I, I actually think Three's Company is a better title, but Man About the House is very British. I like Suzanne Summers' titties. Yeah, thank about you. the house of the seventies, wasn't it? I remember watching that in the seventies as a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I mean, it's an ancient sitcom, Gray. I mean, Stepford yeah. Son, you know, Step well, Son became Sanford and Son. Uh, Richard, what's his name in it? Um, Richard yeah, O'Sullivan. Death, yeah. Death to his part was was brought over here and became All in the Family. And I'm trying to think what else. Uh, of course, you had that. Um, What's the show David Tennant did with the murder mystery with uh, Olivia Coleman? Um, is it? Oh, uh, Broadchurch. Like, Broadchurch. So that that became an American version, but did Tennant it? Tennant came over here and played an American version of his his okay. British character, and uh, it it was okay. It wasn't great, 
And uh, it was and step -toe 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 -toe. yeah, it was step toe and son. Yeah. And and Kyle and I joke a lot about this, but uh, Red Fox's real name was Fred Sanford, which is kind of ironic because that's what his name was in the series. And uh, whenever whenever Bill or Mark or Kyle go off on one of their dirty tangents, they get a clip from Steptoe and Son. You dirty old man. <laughs> and son from, uh, I love that, actually. But uh, so so the guy. OK, so the guy who plays the well he he a lot of people thought he was the master but he was called the warlord i think in the in the doctor who um uh storyline of um war games which was um the last one of the second doctor with pat patrick oh, uh, so i can't think of who, i can't think of who the actor was but apparently he went on to star in a sitcom in in uh, the UK, and that's and he was well known as being that character. And so people, what sitcom? Out, uh, I don't know, I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look it up. But but he but he played the war the war master. But he was actually he was um, from Gallifrey, just like Doctor Who, and he was mm -hmm. trying to get Doctor Who to help him to make time to machines make time machine. and uh it, it was very interesting and uh but but every time that i mention it to anybody from the uk and post a picture of them they're going oh well he was so and so from so and so everybody knew him as so and so so yeah you know, that's what, what was the uh, i'm gonna look it up now because you've got me what was the shit what was this episode the war master uh, or war, what was the episode war games called? war games War Games, War Games, Doctor Who. So it's going to be talking about Red Dwarf. That's a fantastic series. I oh, did, is that not yeah. great? Red yeah, Dwarf. I did see War the American War pilot. War. It was awful. Oh, it was terrible, giving, yeah. Christina is giving a two thumbs up for Red Dwarf. But yeah, it was great. Is that the one that Lenny was on? Lenny Maybe. Henry? Or no, 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 no. Uh, Craig, um, what's his name? Craig. I, I always get them mixed up, and I don't know why. No, um... Did you find it? Warlord. Or was it Warlord or War? All right, so right, you'll get this one, Mark. It's an actor called, Philip, actor called Philip Maddock, and he played, you know, the Dad's Army episode where they catch the U-boat uh, yeah, yeah. crew. Oh, Philip he plays the U-boat captain yeah. in that Dad's Army episode. And he played lots so I'm of guessing that's where he's best bombs. known from. Yeah, but he's known he's known in something else um, apparently that that ran for years, and I, I don't know what it was, but I don't um, see anything here. Yeah, I'll have to I'll, I'll have to look it up off the show, but um, he appeared in the Avengers a few times. Yeah, well, everybody was in the Avengers, weren't they? I mean, seriously, that now now the Avengers was the big. Um, that that was a show that they didn't even dare make an American version of. They just brought it over, just like The Prisoner, you know, which I can't even imagine what would have happened if they'd done an American version of The Prisoner back then. They did one. They did one in the like 2009. Wasn't that with like uh, Jim Cav Caviezel or whatever his name Caviezel? is? Caviezel, yeah. yeah. AKA oh, Jesus, AKA, AKA Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't like it. I, in fact, I hated the American version. I thought it was stupid. It was, I mean, it came like 30, 40 years later. It was just was not, it wasn't entertaining to me. It just was, yeah. they tried the to make it. That 60s thick. cheek, it was thick, didn't it, as well? So, 60s cheek, what was chic, 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 chic. I don't know, that's how you will. Yeah. Well, you know, it ran here over a summer um, on CBS. And I remember yeah. as a kid, I was frightened to death of the of the rovers, those balloon things that would suck people in and take them back to the village. That nice. scared the crap out of me. You know, I was an adult before I realized all it was was a big fucking balloon. But you know, <laughs> that's me. I, I just I, I'm so stupid, man. I just like I totally buy into these shows, you know. But and then so another another UK show that was both UK and American, I guess, was Space 1999. And Barry Morse was in. Was it not exactly the same show in both countries, though. 
Yeah, same same yeah, yeah, not a different. Yeah. yeah. And Barry Morris was in the first season and he died in the first episode of the second season. And he was known for being the um, the originator of the care of the character in the fugitive that um, Tommy Lee Jones played in the in the movie version with Harrison Ford. And right. so a lot of people didn't even know he was British for years uh, over here. You know, of course, he was big in the UK and stuff. So everybody knew who he was over there. But he did an episode with um, Carol O'Connor, who went on to be Archie Bunker, of course, in the American version of Death to His Part. But they did a they did an episode of The Outer Limits with Grace Lee Whitney, who went on to be uh, Yeoman Rand, I think, on Star Trek. Is that right, Kyle? Yeoman Not a clue. Huh? Not that a clue. That what? guy who played Warlord apparently was briefly in the pilot of Space 1999 as well. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Have a good one, Scotty. Thanks for coming by. And uh, speaking of Passion of the Christ, his his icon was Jesus, so it's kind of weird. But uh, um, no, yeah, uh, a... Mark, Mark, what did you pick up the other night at that on that sale? Yeah, so we had um, uh, um, Darren and I realized we were both bidding at the same auction. Uh, oh, that means, sucks. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it doesn't because it means we because we knew we made sure we weren't bidding on the same bids. Oh, that's uh, right. I knew you guys. I forgot. That's so right. We that's sort right. of we sort of checked with each other and said, "Look, Darren said I want to bid on these ones," and I said, "Well, it's fine. I'm just going to want to bid on these ones." So there was only two or three where we were planning to both bid. So we backed off. So we we, we agreed who was going to bid for what. Um, so, yeah, so I guess he's missing tonight or today because he's gone to. Go he's gone down to. He's gone down to the bloody south coast to look at a comic collection. Oh, so I thought I thought it was to pick up the things he won. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, so yeah, he, he's he was going to Hastings, the Hastings, the Hastings, which is on the south coast, which, like from Doncaster, is like about an eight-hour drive. Oh my god! So um, I hope he's. I hope he's <laughs> something up worthwhile. I hope so. Yeah. Does he, yeah. Does he factor in his time and petrol when it comes to working out the value of the of the halls? I don't think. <laughs> he does. I think he quite enjoys quite enjoys the process he likes know. getting out and getting well it's the beautiful british countryside i mean what's not i was going eight hours away i'd just get a hotel room make a day out of it yeah yeah, yeah. but no he he does it all in he's one going day. there and back in the day he's crazy but you know let's, well let's hope he remembers to lock his car doors this time in his garage when he leaves Oh, yes, I largely, I largely got what I wanted. There was two House of Secrets lots which I wanted to get, which I got. Um, there was what the one I didn't get was almost complete run of the second series of the Phantom Stranger. Um, the, the one I know, one. I know Gray's got quite a few of them. I've got the full run of that one. Yeah, that was um, one I completely. Great year or two well even last year or year before it's a fantastic it's a fantastic run i mean i've got all but about four or five but i you know i wanted them to resale so oh that's yeah. wonderful that's uh, great i didn't yeah, get yeah. it so it went for oh, yeah. it went, it, I, I sort of had a maximum bid of 120 and it went for about 180 and you've got your your own slingers is sad in you mark yeah yeah. Don't 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 double up on the Phantom Stranger one that I've got for my tree. My oh, tree I, oh, I'm going to have a look at my Phantom Strangers now. If I go first, <laughs> you've you got the ones they have. I've already got one from there. The Phantom Stranger 50 series. That's a hell of a get. Oh yeah, that's yeah. really oh, yeah, that's much more expensive. expensive. That's quite difficult. Yeah. It's only about yeah. five or six issues, isn't that for series one? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, um, no. and I got a few, I got a few sort of. Um, Cheaper lots, you know. I got a couple of cracking Spider-Man lots for about twenty quid, which I'll be able to flog for three times the price. That's excellent. Um, uh, I got a nice Defenders lot, half of which is going to go to Kyle. Um, pretty decent price. Uh, yeah, so it was quite a good one because they it, uh, they weren't going for silly prices. Um, so you know, there were quite a few lots started at ten quid and went for twenty for you know decent. Kyle, 
Kyle, do you have most of the JMD Mateus uh, issues of defenders? Most of them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we mean, had it, we had granted it's in his so run that uh, very cool, very I cool. I have some, but it's just I just I'm down to filler issues. Yeah, giant size three and filler issues. That's awesome. That's a couple awesome. of precursors. I need subby thirty five again. Well, yes, this is one eighty three. The reason it went cheap is because they the auctioneers called it new defenders well the new defenders started at issue one two five so they yeah. retitled it issue one two five new defenders so of the 10 or 12 comics in there there was a, there was about three or four between one two five and 150 and the rest were all in the main defenders run because they titled it new defenders that would have put a lot of people off from bidding for it so, um, so, so, so it's still, so it's still the defenders. They, it's the same run. They just retitled it at one ten five. They just added the word. They're in good condition. It, it, they looked okay from the photos until you actually. This is one of the no. problems bidding on auction. Take your chances, then, yeah. It's like the House of Secrets lot. Um, whether I made, whether it was a good deal or not, depends on two comics. There are two Bernie Wrightsons. Uh, if they all come in, and they're, if they all come in in a terrible condition, I'll, I'll do the good thing and take them off you to get them out of your hands. You know what I mean? But they got, you know, loose pages. You've already got a stack about this big. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the two key Bernie Wrightsons are half the one hundred. And 103. Hey. Uh, both of them. The so guys, um, Joe's here. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, <laughs> so, so well. the way the contraband, the cops here, you know. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought he brought the contraband. <laughs> you remind me of the Kool Aid guy. <laughs> yeah, just, just for your information, you were talking about running yeah. an illegal casino around the back a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone, someone thought I was thought this was a casino. They didn't realize oh, it was yeah. a comic store. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Speakeasy. So, speakeasy. Yeah. No, that's what we think it is anyway. But uh, but no. Um, no, we we've had we've had kind of a. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop for a few minutes because uh, Joe's helping me with the uh, family problem. Uh, I have a brother-in-law who uh, got stopped the other night, and he's he wasn't drinking or anything, but because he has some mental illness issues, they thought he was he they thought he was drunk, so they processed him for that, which is. Horrifying to me, because, but he's probably he's probably going to be exonerated because they they did do a blood blood draw, so I think he's going to be okay. But he was he was he was down in the jail for almost a whole day before we could get him out. Yeah, yeah. And my my mother in law was absolutely he lives with with my in laws. My mother in law was absolutely you know uh, beside herself trying to figure out where he was. I mean, we didn't know. We, we thought maybe he had, maybe he had been in a car accident or something, and and Joe was helping me like process him as a missing person, and then the. Not give him a call, huh? Did he not get a free call? They always say you got the movies. Always say you get a free one free call. Well, yeah. Well, it's not free. Whatever. They charge you at the yin yang here. Like like one call is can can cost like twenty bucks. To the person you're calling, oh, uh, it's our yeah. our our system is so screwed up. It's just so yeah. screwed up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself. If you want to mute me, I'm and I'll be back. I'll mute you, mate. Okay, buddy. I'll mute you. Give okay. us a, give us a thumbs up when you want back in. Yeah. You got anything new this week, Mark? Yeah, I've got, I've got some few pickups. Um, This came from a, there's a, there's a guy who sells uh, vintage stuff on um, UK Rock Art. I don't know why he does it. He stopped. I, he did it for a bit and then he stopped. And I thought he'd given up because he was not getting the right prices. And we came back. Uh, and I, I, I'm always the biggest buyer when he comes on. So, um, 
Oh, um, nice. I'm after the run of that one. And that's uh, Nixon on the cover. Yeah, I thought so. Tricky Dicky. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Your patient is stark raving mad, Doctor. Is it, scientific? it is scientifically impossible there could be a planet on Earth where the most famous leader is named Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. They should, make a, they should make a modern version of that if Trump gets back in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a nice little series. There are a couple of really great Dave Stevens covers um, on this on this run, but this is a Mobius cover, um, and I really like Mobius. Um, so that's Cheval. Something right. black. What's a Cheval in French? Black horse. So it's 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 black, black horse. wasp. Black horse. Oh, horse, yeah, Chevalier. Yeah, the, publisher, yeah, horse. the publisher is Black Horse, and they, ah, did, a, yeah, they yeah. did a run called Cheval Noir. Cheval Noir. Right. Um, and this is in, I mean, it's it's in a, it's probably 9.0 plus. Um, this one was nice. Uh, pick this, he was, I mean, it's crazy. It's not in, it's, it's, it's probably a 4.0, four, four but it's the second appearance of Blade. Um, <laughs> Tomb of Dracula, number 12. I've got a 4 second appearance of Blade myself. You've got one of those? But I, the only, the only uh, Dracula I've got is the uh, Blade Origin, which I think is like 13, maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, could be. Uh, also, I picked up a couple of Corbins for my mate who comes and buys Corbins from me at the London Comic Mart. So oh, on a random, yeah. Dan number three. And... I've got this, but this is for selling to the guy who comes and buys Corbin from me. Um, no. um, pick this one up because I can sell these on whatnot. So I'll pick this up for two quid. I'll get a fiver for this. Oh, yeah. So it's just a move it on comic. Um, yeah. This one, I've never seen this before. This is Wildcats X Men 3D 3D. Uh, issue. Okay. Yeah. Jim uh, Lee. Jim Lee, yes, you were right. Uh, this one's fun. I've got about three or four copies of this. Uh, this is J. Scott Campbell, Danger Girl 1. Again, absolute cracking condition. Uh, I also pick these up when I get them at Silly Pride. You know, this was like two quid he got, I got this for. Um, this is the Marvel Milestone yeah, those are 10 or 15 bucks here now. Yeah, yeah. I can always get a fiver for that. Uh, this is really nice. I hadn't got this. I'm a Gru collector. Um, and this is from the original Pacific Comics run, and it's issue three, which I haven't got. I think that completes my Pacific Comics run of, um, of Gru. Cool. And uh, this one's fun. I've got, I've got, have got some of them. I've got a pretty good collection of these in the attic, but I don't, I'm fairly sure I haven't got this, which is the tick number. Oh, uh, oh a book I need right there. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I need this. issue one. I need issue two. I know I need that one. I've not got this one either, Kyle. So this game in my tick collection. So yeah, um, three quid. I mean that that first series. There's only like ten issues, and I have half of them. But that's that's on my mm. want list. Yeah, just uh, to have them. Shit, yeah, just, I, I, I got I've seen more, more tick TV shows than I have red co tick comics. It's a good TV show as well. I really enjoyed the TV show. Um, Both of them. The original one, with Patrick Warburton's hysterical. Mm. Um, Are you Sarah or whatever was good as well. Sarah, yeah, Sarah, yeah, Sarah, Sarah that's, That's the, the one. one I got the autograph stuff from. I got the cast autograph poster. Oh, from. nice. Nice. I like, I really enjoyed that. Um, mm -hmm. Right. You know how sometimes you never, you've never seen a comic and then suddenly you get three all <laughs> So this, it's the first, it's the first cameo of the Rocketeer in yep. that. It's got the advert in it for the next issue. On the back page. Uh, yeah. So um, I bought this on uh ebay about a month ago and uh, this bloody thing keeps coming up everywhere i look now yeah <laughs> so i've got like four or five of them yeah i've now got three of them 
<laughs> so, of course, I got a 9.8 issue too, so that don't hurt. Oh, that doesn't hurt. No, that's very nice. Um, and then finally, I pick these up. Um, I've got a load of uh, this is this is speculation. Um, this is the new 52 Batman by Scott Snyder and uh Greg Capullo. I really enjoyed it. Um, effectively, it's the only the second series of Batman. Um, and it's still only the second series of Batman because they went back to the original numbering when they did Rebirth. So um, this run here, which I think goes for about 50 issues, it's got the Court of Owls um, storyline in it. Yeah. Um, really nice. These are these are great. If you can pick these up for two or three quid, they're worth about a tenner each, these are. Um, so, Yeah. So a little, little pick up from single seller. I, I priced those up. I paid about 60 quid for those, and I reckon they're worth, I could flog them for about 150. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, I got a line on a CGC 9.6 Star Slayer 2 as well. Nice, nice. So it's not an expensive comic. It hasn't taken, it hasn't, it doesn't, it hasn't sort of gone loopy at all. No, but I figure if I get the nine six, I can sell off the nine six and keep the nine eight around for the wife and kids. And yeah, you know, yeah. Right now, the nine eight's like a quick three hundred, three fifty. Is it okay? Nice. So, and I got it for a comic I paid a buck and a quarter for. Yeah, so that's so. another one I read today. Oh, that's nice. Is that any good? I've got that. about three, three copies of that. Three copies. Yeah, I will have one. Three D. I don't know. I, like I read the uh, couple of mystery in space. Oh, nice! They're nice. There was a J.M. de Matisse, Matthias, uh story in, in one of them. It was quite cool. That's a great Jim Starlin cover too. Which one? That one? Or that one? That one. That STA right under in the orange. I've got uh, got one of those with the military sticker on it because they quit doing the stamp on them and the Mark Jewelers giveaway. I've got one that is a military giveaway of that mm -hmm. issue, but a Starlin cover like Frank Miller interior art, Kaluta interior art. That that's an insane issue. Got some insane stuff. I don't know. I got a stack of old war books if anybody's interested, but yeah, so show, show away, show yeah. away. Uh, I'm just gonna... I've got more war books than I need right now. Get drink I'm only getting there. something I wasn't gonna collect, but I seem to be yeah. getting lots of them. I need to get a box for them as well because I can't they just they're just piled up at the moment on top of one of the other boxes. I really need to have a shuffle up with some more boxes because like my JLA, for example, it's massively stuffed box, plus is like 20 comics sitting on top with the lid kind of like, like that on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> it. Almost every one of my boxes upstairs are like that now. Until I can finish rearranging. That's yeah. part of why I brought this box down here today. I need to shuffle some of the ones into the long boxes and clear that long boxes that haven't got like long runs in, but a lot of different runs in, you know? But Move them around like a bit this. or something. Yeah, collecting chaos got me thinking yesterday, and this was right on top, so I figured I'd just go through these. Guess Bill and Darren are gonna miss out, but I think I need to turn on an interior light here. That should help a little bit. But yeah, these ain't taken outside because there's far too many Golden Age books. Yeah, but I'm going to start with these because they're there and sitting on the box. As soon as Mark gets back. And I was going to organize these in different ways, not that out of hell with it. I'm just going to keep them where I got them shuffled right now and not even worry about it. Mm. Because they're all going to end up in different places anyway. My favorite issue of Showcase that I've owned. I mean, granted, if I had Showcase 4, I'd be kind of happy with that. 
That's a cool one. And I'm pretty That's sure true. this is the last issue, or it's close to it, but I'm pretty sure this is the last issue. That's actually that's actually a good one because I'm working on a circus themed uh, Slinger's Choice, so that'll be ideal for that. I'll have to try and see if we can pick yeah. that up at some point. Where did Mark go? Random Weird War. Literally showing that on cover Slingers this Saturday. The tree is trees the. Trees, the topic. Yeah. Uh, trees you got topic. two trees. You got two trees on this because death's drunk. Exactly. Too, so. Exactly. That's what I thought. And uh, what I was talking to you about, see if I can get you to jump out of a helicopter with me. No, thanks. <laughs> of course. Don't, so. don't jump out of any moving vehicles if I can help it. It seems, got, it seems it. a foolish endeavor. I want to loop back around to these though, but I don't want to go too far because I'm gonna. Not even when I was young and more able, would I have thought of jumping about a move out of a moving vehicle? And you know, unless a, per a perfectly functioning moving vehicle, I wouldn't jump out of it. Let's put it that way. I have jumped off a moving train, jumped out of an airplane, jumped out of a helicopter, and wow. jumped out of a there slow moving car. People like that, Kyle. There is a, there's a few words of people like that. <laughs> but again, I mean, I made, I made, I never hit the fact that I wanted to be a stunt man, but jumping off the train was incredibly stupid. That's what I'm going to be saying. Jumping out of a moving car, doing, I mean, even at 10 miles an hour, that's critically dangerous. Yeah. But you just tuck and roll, right? I got, I got lucky. That's all it was. I got lucky away from my stupidity hmm. all right. now, now, then. now that he's back i'll at least start proper showing these all right. some little showcase and like i said if memory serves me right that's the last issue of showcase okay 104 yeah i think it is it's a little cool cover anyway in a random weird war and uh this is another one you can't show you can't show this one the weekend either mark because i've got this in my bag for slingers as well <laughs> i haven't been through my weird wars yet to pick out tree comics now i've got two i can use some random <laughs> dell here's some early mid 60s dell he's a cool nice. color I don't think we've seen these before, Kai. War stories coming back. Yeah. Air, Air war, war stories. stories. That's some great, great covers. Yeah, a really good cover. And that's a George Evans painted cover. And I keep meaning to put, I've got a George Evans 11 by 18 signed lithographs. So. That's really nice. I like that one. Uh, I finally got this out to First Italians and it's in obscenely oh, high grade. Very good. Was yeah. that an actual unit, the Hellcats, or was it just made up for this story? Oh, I don't know. There probably was a Hellcats. And then some random bar armies. 134. Oh, I mean at war. 198, again, just a Bunch of randoms I pulled out of the stack. Is he, is he in Batman's back cave in that one? You would think with the big old nickel. Yeah. I pulled this one out because of that. GLX. CLX. You know what that is? No. Well, you know, the star stamp is a giveaway for uh, oh, Mark, Jewelers. Mark Jewelers is there. This yeah. doesn't Mark Jewelers, but that's a PX stamp. That's oh, a right. military PX stamp, but this isn't a Mark Jewelers issue. Um, pretty sure it's random, but I'm pretty sure that's the last issue of Men of War. 12, is that? Is that no, number 12? No, 13, no, it's more than that. I've got a few of that in the 20s, I'm sure. 
Is it? Okay. Uh, there yeah, some well, it's re weirdly, one of the more books I've got the, practically the most issues of because Rayman sent me something and I okay, and I picked up a few myself. I only got about six, but I'm sure there's a couple in the 20s that I've got. Yeah, there's, there's, a there's some reason I had that because you can see a pattern going here. So, oh, this is lost issues, is it? There's a, a lot of these I pulled were last issues. I can't remember this, but there's something about that Men of War, but if it's not a last issue, I don't know what it is. No. So here's a fun one. He went, a, he went a 26, that one did. Huh. Men of War went to 26 issues. Well, there's just something pertinent about issue 13 on why I kept that. But. So I look, I can work it out. You ought to be dead, right. Kyle. Last issue. Here's a fun part. There's the newsstand and direct of the final issue. And like I said, there is almost no method to this madness. I was going to organize these Army, Navy, and the whole bit, but it's just ridiculous. Mm. An old Charlton fighting Navy. Issue, I have no idea. It's not on it. But sinking ships. Star Spangled War, 165. Collecting Chaos picked up a low grade copy of Showcase 34 today. Is that an Atom one? I think he was saying that, wasn't he? Was he was not saying that in the chat yesterday. He was picking up an Adam. Uh, Showcase 31 and 32 were Adam. 34 is like Hawkman, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. GI Combat. <laughs> I can hear the enemy coming. Get ready. First Adam, apparently. Oh, I thought that was... Maybe I'm thinking backwards. Maybe Hawkman was 31. Hmm. And then... Uh, Adam was 34 and 35. Taroa. You know what these guys are? Hold on. I want another screen at the moment. Look at my Atom run. Well, the US Army. Nope. US Navy. Not them, uh, what are they called? The Cotney Rhyming Slang um, Flouncing Queens? Marines? Tupel is that what it is? They are Tupel Hunden. Oh, oh Tupel Hunden. Germans, are they? Yeah. They're what the Germans call the Marines. Tupel oh. Hunden. We we call we call him flouncing queens in Cockney Rhyming Slang. Flouncing Queens. I'm flouncing yeah. Queens. <laughs> hey, didn't they have to do a song like that? <laughs> That's the Cockney Rhyming Slang uh, for Marines. Yeah, here's some <laughs> messed up stuff. High Shining Brass by Don Lomax. <laughs> You need to get a black pen and cross off the B and the R. High shining ass. <laughs> yeah, if you ever have an emulated covers. I've got showcase 35 and 36. I'd like to get a 34 at some point, but, you know, they do get pricey. Uh, then the real, I told you I knocked these out of order. This is the restart of Blackhawk. Yeah. They they get too serious by this point. I I prefer my Blackhawks in the, the dopey sixties yeah. era where like craziness is going on, robots and hypnotism and and um like they've got a mascot called Blackie that helps them out in in, in and missions. This and stuff. has Rosetta artwork in it and it's signed by one of the artists. It's nice, I like that one. It's the last one, isn't it? JMD Mateus's first DC work proper. Which weird war is that? Oh, nice weird war. Weird war. Oh, mind a weird war, huh? Oh, and look, he signed it. <laughs> never, I never see that many weird war around. You, uh, Mark? I picked up quite a few. I've picked up quite a few, yeah, because uh, I do collect um, it. Oh, my Bronze Age. Yeah. Not really a war, like but it fits thing. the theme. And the only reason I grabbed it is because so, I was in my here and there one or two, but never like a huge amount, it seems. Autographed by JRJR. 
They're quite expensive, Gray. They're they're quite hard to find in the low numbers. The later ones with the the later ones have now got expensive because of um, Critch Commando. Critch Commandos. I know it's annoying, yeah. isn't it? I like Joy Robot as well. So and yeah, talked about this lot, one the so. other day. Signed by JM, John Beatty, and Mike Zach. Oh, very nice. Oh, okay. That's worth having. Cheers, mate. Did you get did you get it signed, Carl, or did you buy it signed? Oh, uh, that was a gift to me. That's signed by Joe Simon, nice. and Dave Hoover. So you gotta have a Simon and Kirby, but I was going through sign. This is signed on the interior, issue two is signed on the cover, but again, more books. Oh, Joe Kubert. I'll take me meds. Nice Kubert autograph cover. Nice. I've, only, I've got like four or five Kubert autographs sitting around here. And then my only Mark Jewelers DC. So I'm thinking backwards. Hawkman came after him. Hawkman came after Adam. I don't know what the hell this is we'll stuck back. in my head for. All American Men of War number seven. Blazing action. Pretty <sighs> sweet. Pretty sweet condition. Is that water for a geezer there? Or is that exploding in the water? Oh, look. Marines in action. Mm. An atlas, number eight, with a date stamp. That's got me written all over it. <laughs> and that's a crap grade. Here's a mid grade. Uh, 13. I thought Marines in action would be like loads of guys sitting around doing their knitting and like scratching well, yeah, their and stuff like that. That about sums it up right there. <laughs> Aquaman. Okay, it was Aquaman that came before me. Told you, I don't trust my brain anymore. Marines mm. in battle, number six. Another atlas. Right Ooh, as the code hit. I mean, these are right at These era code. of, of uh, war books, the faces on the soldiers are so so bleak and like yeah, you know are. they look they look shell-shocked or bloody well frenzied from battle don't they another so this is sort of a war book kent blake of the secret service. of the secret service another atlas now granted this isn't a code book because this is pre-code i think by six months yeah it's an atlas pre-code well, pre-code is pre-code that matter how many months it is Combat Kelly, number 36. Oh, now that's very early code. Look at the size of the Comic Code Authority sticker. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we jump panel. back. We jump back, pre code. Man Comics. Man Comics. Man comics. Yes. Men in the weird title. Man. <laughs> Mind you, I, I, I think always man like comics is better than boy heads. comics. Little beachhead's always good. I don't mind getting sand in my crack for some beachhead. <laughs> uh, I see. Here's one you really won't see every day. Jet Spaces. American. Where's the number? Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Numero one. Number one. one. Number one. Oh, this group? What, what, it's, what? And it's one of these... Uh, ANC Press, it's one of the smaller ones, it's like and date stamp. That's a 1951 date stamp. True aviation picture story, number nine. And if memory serves, this is like 1942. I'm not pulling these out right now, so. True Comics 34, and I know this is 1944. So this is while the war is still on? Yeah. Yeah, a stack of these are wartime books. That, that's a two-staple. That's a two-staple. Uh, Navy Combat, and I'm pretty sure this is during the Korean War, but they were yeah. paper drives of World War II. Mass Attack. 
Uh, random, like 1960 Charlton, War at Sea. Yeah, it's nice. So many war. And our army at war. 74. 74. Only yeah. missed it by a few issues. It's a strange phenomenon, isn't it? I mean, all these war books from they sort of faded out, didn't they? I mean Same um, with cowboy books. War books, cowboy books, they've all gone gone by the by, haven't they? Have we got any war books yeah. there at the moment? I don't think Captain so. Savage number four. Every now and again, you get a little series of war books like Garth Ennis did a few, didn't he? War stories a, a couple yeah. of years back. Yeah, but they're, they're few and far between, aren't they? Yeah. No, there's no regular, I don't think. Right. Men of Action. Number. Oh, it's not on the cover. It's number two. Our Fighting Men of Action, number two. What was the company there? Hydra or something? What was the company? Ajax. Ajax. Probably the rarest war book that I have. GI Combat. Why is it rare? Quality comic. That's an early. No, I think it's like, oh. This is before what DC is. bought him. It's a what? This, this is the ongoing series of GI Combat. DC bought him. Right, yeah, for DC. Yeah, GI mean? Combat did not start in DC. These issues are their ghost. They just right. didn't survive. They weren't that popular. They just didn't survive. Quality folded. So, like, 21 issues were quality. And, like, Tom Orzakowski has wanted this off me for years. Wasn't quality the company that had like Human Bomb and Uncle Sam and stuff like that? Had a whole bunch of stuff like that. They pulled it out, but these books, these books are just, they're just non existent. They're like, mm. you know, timelies and the condition's not that great. And they're, they're, they're like Charlton's. They're so flimsy. They just didn't survive. Monty Hall of the U.S. Marines. <laughs> Almost every one of these I got as a gift too. It is a nice. It's nice when they do that. June of nineteen fifty-two during the Korean War, number yeah. six. Hey there, boys. Here they come, boys. So they simplify. Simplify. Fight Marines twenty-two. What does simplify actually mean? Always faithful. Semper fidelis. Always faithful. It's short for it's. I don't. When they say simplify, it's silly because. Semper right. Fidelis means always faithful. It's a shortening, okay. It's just shortened. But there's a fight Marines and a old period card. <laughs> Couple more. I'm almost positive this uh, issue three. I'm almost positive this comes from a uh, pedigree lot. Because of that right there. Spike and the bat on a commando raid. Because of that right there. What? Somebody okay. scribbled on it, Kyle. Huh? Somebody scribbled on it. It's from box A276. Right. That's one of those provenance ones where, like, the guy did his books. You know what I mean? Marked his books like that and then stored them away. I'm mm. trying to remember what pedigree this came from. But... Um, this this got to me via Bob Beerbaum, and Bob got it out of the pedigree, but I can't remember what the hell pedigree it was. So it's not terribly high condition, but it's not it probably a six, six and a half, but not all pedigrees are like nines, nine yeah. fours or whatever. But it came out of like one of those. Uh, Who is this Bob Beerbaum guy that? Um... Bill was on about last week. Um, Story, he, is isn't he? The, he is the American comic book encyclopedia. He is um, what, who helped launch the underground comics movement. He ran comic shops in San Francisco in the early 60s. He's been setting up at conventions since he was 15 in the early 60s. The guy's just steeped in comic 
keeping comics alive during the down times and things okay. like that. He, if, if not for him, there would not be a diamond retailers distributor. It just wouldn't be it. Without him, there wouldn't be one. Period. <laughs> so how's he doing? He's the guy that Chuck Rosansky seeks advice from. So, because uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, here, I only got about six more or ten more to go through, but he's the guy that Chuck yeah, sought out with the mile high thing. <laughs> Here's a fun one. Yanks in battle number one. Another quality. Was there ever a title called Yanks in Tanks? Yeah, uh, you would think. <laughs> now you talk about a grimace on somebody's face. How about a photo copy? How about a photo cover? Yeah. Uh, with the Marines. With the Marines from the battle fronts of the world. I'm just going through these all while I'm here. So, did you get paid? Um, did you get paid for modeling that, Kyle? Huh? Did you get paid for modeling that? Yeah, you'd think. Um, War Heroes. I think this is issue two as well. Really high grade Ace Comics. Nice. Little staining and wearing tear to it, but that's tight for like a 1951 book. That's tight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got some nice old ones there, mate. Uh, here's an odd one. Yeah, I love this cover. I did that for the oh, mustache man. covers on Slingers. <laughs> yeah. did, you get a lot of, uh, did you get a lot of Mongols attacking the uh, Axe <laughs> in the Second World War? Um, final issue of this. The Charlton only had a few of these issues go up to mm -hmm. when this right here, all this is a dead giveaway. No price inside there. The price is over here. October, Charlton. So what's the way off? I think they put out ish, a couple issues in November, but this is the very end of Charlton Comics. Right uh, the very end. Charlton became no more after like November of that year. Fighting Marines, and another early 60s Charlton. I said these aren't, they're in somewhat order, but then they're not. Oh. Yeah, here's a nightmare that goes back several years. So that nasty little nick off the top of that. Yeah. Mm. There's that nasty little nick off oh, the top of that. There you go. Tape. Tape. Oh. This piece of tape has been on there for 35 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another fight, Marines. There's... God, I can't have them with. There's like four or five. Uh, Fight Marine 79. Love this cover. I wonder if you go to um, Ukraine or Russia, whether there's some war, war propaganda comics. Yeah. Here's another October of, I think it's 84, when they folded up the 75 centers to star. But this is also one of the last Charlton comics released. There's a couple funny animal ones too. But if you see these, these are the print runs on these are ridiculous. They're like eight thousand was the print run. They're just not that. Popular. Charlton did their own printing, didn't they? I was reading up the other day. Charlton had their own printing machine. They did. They yeah, did Charl their yeah, Charlton had their whole thing. And then this was just a mm. Civil War one that was sitting there. So. Yep, and that's it. And then fun little gasm were oh, that one's thing is that one. There. This was you. I'm not digging out the rest of the box, but there there's some more related things that I thought about flipping. Mm -hmm. There yeah, I should have stand to work. comic books today. Oh, it's actually got a customer look. Cool. Nice change. Well Phil's not there, so oh. But he's got a customer. Oh but, yeah. This there low. Not a bad batch of autographs. Two Joe Cuberts, a Joe Simon, a Mike Zeck, two D Mateuses, and a Sid Couchy. Not a bad stack of autographs. Not real. Hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna going to, I've got stuff I've got to deal with right now, so I'm gonna cut out a little early today. Sorry, guys. Yep. It's been great. No worries. Love you guys. Have a wonderful week. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Okay. We will. See you guys. See you later. Bye, guys. See you later, mate.
But yeah, I just wanted you to see those, Mark, just in case any of them made you salivate and go, shit, I can do something with old Warbucks. Oh, I quite like a lot of those, Kyle. <laughs> um, I don't collect war stuff, but some of the covers just are great. Um, yeah, there's some great covers in them. I, I, you know, I get it's like when I Gray turned me on to um, some of the, uh, he turned me on to Justice League and some of the DC stuff by showing me colors. So Lois, can, you got into, didn't you? Yeah, and like, you're the, yeah, you're responsible for Lois as well. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, you know, so I don't, it's like, um, I didn't think I was going to like weird, weird war tales, but actually, it's <laughs> one of my favorite horror titles now. The covers are just fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, like JM said, that's that's where they broke a lot of people in. Yeah, those anthology uh, books. Yeah, yeah. So you catch a lot of big names in that that weren't big names at the time. So yeah, uh, so yeah, I quite liked quite lots of those. Quite liked some of the rare. You know, some of those are really rare. Um, some of them, some of them be hundred dollar books easily, wouldn't they? Yeah, maybe more. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, some of those. And then, uh, some of those 1940s ones, definitely. I'd hate to add to the competition, them, though, Mark, but I did want to tell you this. You know, Scott Harris King's about to hit, he's probably hit a thousand subscribers by now, and he's doing a thousand subscriber giveaway. I won his, I won his, um, like 800 or whatever. Yeah. I don't think I found the comics. I don't think I got the comics from that. Where the hell are they? But, uh, oh. Yeah, but his thousand subscriber yeah. giveaway, he's got some autograph books coming up. You see this from Splat? He said it'd be uh, half uh -oh. an hour and he's going to blow our minds. Well, there we go. Driving now. Cool. Um, so Scott announced what his grand prize piece is going to be in the thousand giveaway. Because you know Scott's stories about meeting Stan Lee multiple times. And yeah. Yeah, having his like Avengers one and four signed by him and stuff. So he's giving away three prizes, three prize packages, and one's gonna have autographs of one thing and autographs of another that he acquired. But the big one that he didn't want to give away right away, he let the cat out of the bag on his live the other day. He's giving it away an Avengers three hundred signed by Walt Simonson and Stanley. Nice. You're not driving, Darren. Yeah, I'm driving. Well, shit, holy crap. <laughs> hey, you remember to close your car doors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I shut my house door this morning, though, so the house door might have been open all day long. Can you hear me okay? Because I'm, like, wi fi yeah. in a parking lane. Yeah, right? yeah, he's yeah. fine, actually. Better than right. indoors. I'm going to blow your mind, right? Listen to this, right? I've had the craziest telephone call. It's nuts. I've never had anything like this before in my life, right? A woman has called me today. I was out doing collections, right? And in the middle of the day, this woman called me. Uh, and, like, she says to me, she says, she's sick and tired of her husband and his stupid comics. And she says to me, I have got to rescue her marriage, right? And I have got to come to her house tonight because her husband's supposedly busy, right? And I've got to buy her com his comics and pay her, and I've got to get out of there before he even knows, right? So I'm on the way there now. I'm like, I've just got in because I'm like probably, I don't know, 15 minutes away, right? And I've got to get into the house and get out real quick. And I've gonna, and so I'm going to join the show after I've got the comics in the car or something. And I'll give you a full update. And that's it. I've got to go because like this is just crazy. So I'll see you later. Okay, peace out. That's going to end the marriage, not bloody save it. <laughs> well, possibly. <laughs> see you in a bit. See you later. That's kind of scary. That makes me wonder if my wife would do that to me. <laughs> yeah, that might mean that could. That could end a life, not a marriage. <laughs> I hope he gets out of there before the guy rides his oh, shotgun. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what he'll have to do. What he'll have to do. The husband comes home while he's trying to buy the comics. He'll have to start shagging her so he can get away with it better. Yeah. <laughs> <Probably you. laughs> yeah. Oh, thank God you're trying to shag my wife, not buying my comics. Oh, thank what a relief. <laughs> Take her, leave the comics. <laughs> 
Oh, well, shit, I didn't oh, ran out of things to talk about myself, so. Uh, so have you got any more to show, Gray? Uh, not really, you know. I've, got, I've only got a couple of modern ones. I just That's my little reading park, so I'm at least at the moment. So all I've got is like some modern Hawkman from New 52 and some a modern adventure when it came oh, back oh, again. Oh, so not really anything great to show. In fact, I've kind of like two bought a few more with me, actually. I, I think I'm a bit worried about my reading pile because these modern ones, you can read them free in, think, in 15 minutes, you know what I mean? So so these these are, these are got from uh, an auction, a local auction nearby. I did do a video about them. Um, and Kyle, I, think it's, I know Kyle's seen it. So a couple of these are going on the Kyle pile. I'll show you the Kyle pile ones first. This is nice. um, a Laurel and Hardy. Uh -huh. um, this is interesting. This is from, um, this was actually printed in Poland <laughs> for the UK market. Um, it's licensed. It is a is a reprint of an American uh, edition. What company is that then? Um, it is, um, hang on, let me tell you, it's, uh, yeah, Top Sellers UK. Yeah. Okay, what 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 decade was that? You know, what decade. It was actually nineteen seventy. It's not. It's this is okay. uh, this fifteen, fifty four, fifty five years old. Yeah, printed yeah. in printed in Poland by top, four top sellers UK for the UK market. It's a gold mm -hmm. key reprint. Um, okay. So a gold key did the originals. These Larry, these Larry Harmon's Laurel and Hardy were originally in gold key. Cool. So, that's on the Kyle pile. This next one's also on the Kyle pile. This is another by the same by the same company, Top Sellers UK. Top Sellers UK. Again, this is a gold key reprint of the one that issue 37. They are really rare. I mean, I've never seen this um, in the UK before. Uh, five pence. So, yeah, so this is a bit later. So this would have been about 71, 72. Yeah. Um, next up, this is right. Okay, so you've got a bit of a challenge here, guys. Uh, this is um, so that, uh, it depends on whether you can see the cover well enough. This is uh, Adventure Comics. This is a DC 100 page spectacular, okay, and it's got the world's greatest super females in it. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before, but there was one that I, I, I couldn't identify at the time. But right. someone told me it was, and I've forgotten who it was now. Right, so I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you and Kyle to alternatively name one of these characters. And then, oh, when you get to, when you can't name one, you lose. Okay. Oh gosh. Is Kyle there? No, he's he's wandered off, followed off somewhere, wandered off somewhere. Right. So you well, you can get. So we got some obvious ones. So right. this, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Do you want to, is he back? Yeah, I'm back. Is it my turn? Yeah, so yeah. it's your, your turn. Your turn. Yeah, he can named her, it? so I'm supposed to name Black Canary. Yeah. Next Black up. Hill. Yeah. Black uh, right, next up. You're going to have to hold it. That's Harley Quinn. Yeah. yeah. That's the original Harley Quinn. Oh, Cheetah. Yeah. This woman in very black. hard to see. Sorry? So very hard to see on the yeah, screen. Yeah, we can't really oh, see those. Oh, is that Wonder Girl? No. I can't even and distinguish any of them behind her. Oh, I can see know. Wonder Girl oh, off to the left, and that's about it. Just see see it. Is that Dumb Bunny as well with the ears? Uh, yeah, so that, yes, that's correct. She's one of the... Um, they look that's like the cool. enchantress after her. I mean, you have you have to hold that straight up to the camera to be able to see those back. Ones. Yeah, real close. Yeah, so you're correct. That is Dumb between, Bunny from the um between Dumb Bunny and Cheetah. I can't really make her out very well. She's like a little yeah. yellow trunk. You can a little see black Wonder Girl in the back. Enchantress, correct. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Really enchantress. Small. Who's on the back turn to her? Oh, oh. Yeah, no, I can't I'm tell. Sure. I couldn't. You should be able to get the woman in red. Oh, yeah, we've got one. We've got Donna Troy. Donna Troy. Yeah. In it. Wonder Girl or 
Yeah. Uh, so some Liberty right. Bell. I see Li Liberty Bell Fire Brand. Is that no? Is that Fire Brand? So start, it, from no, so start, start, from, start from this end. You want to start from Hawk, Hawk Woman, Hawk Girl? Yeah. Yeah. Next. Uh, Fawn. Fawn. Yes. Very good. Uh, platinum is it? Yes. Oh, that's a lot easier to see there. Tana. Yeah. Tana, Hawk Girl, Lightning Lass, Killer Frost. Yeah, and then I lose him. Yeah. Um, let me just find the ones. So, Supergirl, Hawk Girl, Thorn, Tina from the uh, Metal Men, Zatanna, Big Barda, Beautiful Dreamer. Did you get Beautiful oh, Dreamer? Right. Yeah, from the Tomorrow people. Yeah. Uh, Star Sapphire. Yeah. Liberty Bell, you got uh, Lilith. Oh, she was a Titan for a while, I believe. Teen Titan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, Wonder Girl, Merry, Merry, Girl of a Thousand right. Gimmicks. Yeah, that was one I didn't know before. Yeah. I was trying to work out. Know, you got, John Bunny, you got Phantom Lady, you got Cheetah, you got Holly Quinn, you got Batgirl, Black Canary, and Wonder Woman. So I think it was just Merry, Girl of a Thousand Gimmicks, which is i I'd never heard of her before. Yeah, she's not exactly. I think she's got a story in that issue, though, I think. Yeah, so that's quite nice. It's important. Not that great condition, but it's a nice comic to have. Yeah. Well, any of those 80 pages or any of the giants, are, they've just got something about them, I think. Yeah. Uh, this cool. one is one I've got in better condition, so this is a reader copy. But it's fantastic. So you've got um, Bernie Wrightson, actually. That was a one-shot, that one. Yeah. One-shot, yeah. Yeah, so, hundred page spectacular weird oh. mystery tales, um, and a really nice Bernie Wrightson cover. Um, when oh, it's weird mystery it. tales that is a series, isn't it? Weird mystery tales. Yeah, it is. It was a short run. Right. Um, this is like a giant. What's nice giant about giant. this is you actually get it's it's you get about twelve or fourteen stories, so it's split into four sections: macabre mystery. Uh, oh, yeah. Eerie Adventures, Monster Menace. You mentioned that in your video when you got it, didn't you? Yeah. I think exactly. I remember that now. And um, Bernie Wrightson, there's a picture of Bernie introducing each section. Oh, yeah, what are you saying? So here he is. There we go. There he is introducing Macabre Mystery. I like that. So that's the infamous self portraits. Yeah. <laughs> That's the infamous teabagging cover as well, isn't it? <laughs> I hadn't thought of it like that, but yes. <laughs> um, I think it is. <laughs> so uh, fantastic comic. Um, I, I've got a, I've got a better copy than this. So this is. Um, I, yeah. I know you said you were interested in buying out. I'll oh yeah, stop. definitely. Yeah, if it's uh, reasonable. Oh, it's um, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Not, I don't know how much that goes for, but you never know these things. Yeah, quite expensive in um, in higher grades. It's quite expensive. Of course, yeah. This is, this is three five. I mean, it's all there. Yeah, well, that's the mate. That's what I'm interested in. As long as it's all there. Um, it's got my, a nice uh, design cover with Captain Nazi on it. Oh. Uh, showcase number 103. Was it 105 you showed? That's Carl 104. 104. Uh, so here's 103. So, yeah, right I've the got end. that. For yeah. some reason, they did a free part, a free part of Hawkman in, in showcase. It was like it was Hawkman and uh, Adam Strange. It was a free part continuing story. I think it was like 100, no, 101, 102, 103. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, because one hundred of showcase is really cool. It's like, it, like it's got an appearance of every character that ever debuted in showcase. It's quite a cool, uh, quite a cool story. Okay, so um, we may need to be prepared to send the police out to rescue Darren. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is nice. This is, uh... He's living dangerously, and he? he's living dangerously, like going to buy a bloke's comic books, but he's not there. Blimey. <laughs> Rich, rich dollars and cents. 
this is uh, quite nice. It's um, this goes for a few quid actually. Yeah. Uh, little dot. I mean, I don't collect these, but they're actually, they're actually reasonably collectible. Um, I do collect this. This is Boris Karloff, uh, Tales of Mystery. Yeah, I've got maybe two. But if I see them, someone's, someone's offered them on Facebook saying for cheap. I'll always pick them up for getting Yeah, they're always picking up. There's quite a few of them. Yeah. It goes on for a number of years. Um, yeah. It goes on after Great. his death. It goes on yeah. after Boris Karloff dies. Mm. The art and director, I, the art plan, director for plan. Harvey on that little dot was Sid Couchy, the guy that signed uh, this book. Okay, yeah, Twilight Zone. They're they're similar, like yeah, similar. as well. Yeah. And, this uh, guy yeah. was the yeah. art director for Harvey. Oh, okay. Who did that? Who did Dot? Heroic comic. That's that's a Hafner cover, but or Cap yeah, whatever. But Sid Couchy that I got this from was the art director for Harvey there. Hey, well, I'm begging, can show stuff off. Look at this. Two and a half pound garlic and herb tenderloin. Very nice. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. That's quite nice. Is so that for dinner tonight, <laughs> Carl? has got his meat out on blinking I'm doing some again. cooking. I had to whip my meat out and do some cooking. Disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Archie. Patsy and Veronica on the cover. Not be bad. Uh, this is one I haven't got, and I do collect the spirit. So um, a nice Harvey spirit cover. There were only two of these. Uh, Harvey only did two issues of the spirit. All right. Um, and this is number two. I need to find number one now. Interesting logo to play on them spirit books. Yeah. I've seen a couple um, of like that kind of logo sort of solid in the in the picture. Yeah, kind of this thing. is another really peculiar Harvey. I'd never heard of this character before. I don't know if you have um uh, uh great Jack, Jack Hughes Frost. Frost. Oh, is Jack Frost, is it? Jack Hugh Frost. Mm. No, I definitely I, think I saw that in your stream. That was the first time I've seen it when I saw you in the video the other day. And this has got Jack Kirby story and art in it. Why has this got Jack Kirby story and art in it in 1967? I thought he was working for Marvel. That'd be a reprint from earlier stuff. More than okay, that. yeah, that makes sense. Because um, he would have, he did, he did. They did work for Harvey all through the 40s. I mean, I, know, I, know, probably, I think there is. A, yeah, there's a story in here. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's probably what it is. And then another one I've never heard of. Um, this is also from, this is Joe Simon Art and Story. Yeah. I've Roger really. shown that before on Slingers B Man. B Man, who showed it, Roger? Yeah. Hey. And aren't the two whoa. E's from B inside the little dot or something? Yes. Federal. Well, yeah, yeah, well, Mark showing yeah. comics. You guys can watch me score my meat. So do you mean? That's what I've always wanted, Kyle. Yeah. And then finally we've got a um, another Harvey. A little Audrey. An Audrey. <laughs> I mean, this is just a local local auction house and about five comic lots. Um, cooking and comics is the new thing. Cooking and comics. We get, cooking and comics, I get Carl sizzling his meat, Carl playing with his tenderloin, and you showing off your comics. <laughs> it's, it's it's sort of uh irresistible sort of um, combo. combo isn't it really exactly and we've got darren going to uh buy comics from some dodgy woman some bloke who's gone out to the pub for a night or something and he's misses his <laughs> What's he going to be like when he comes home? Bloody hell, he's going to be so pissed off, I think. Uh, he's really just going to a dog in park. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he's going to go dogging. Let's hope he doesn't get caught. 
Well, he's, he's threatening to show us what's going on, isn't he? So, um... Yeah. Oh, well, I can get the pork tenderloin myself. They're making me hungry now. <laughs> what are you doing with it? Potatoes, peas, carrots? Make my potatoes and green beans in about 45 minutes. Uh, what's with the name today, Kyle? Two full hundred. Huh? Where does the name come from? Of what? You. Your name. It's German. Okay. The devil dog. Oh, okay. That's what the Germans called the uh, Marines when they scared the shit out of them in the Battle, battle of Bellow Woods in World War One. It's where the name Devil Dog comes from. If you see Devil Dog on comics, that's where it came from. We put the fear of God into Germans. Part of Marine folklore, but I mean the the it wasn't it wasn't us hyping it up as Marines going fuck. I don't ever. It was the Germans going fuck. We don't ever want to face them again. So. Because it takes a special kind of nutcase to run towards shit like that. Mm. You have to be crazy and stupid oh. to want to be a Marine. It's one thing all Marines have in common. They're crazy and they're fucking stupid. <laughs> uh. You should know, mate. That's what I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> you know, to be one step removed from a fucking serial killer, I mean, it's insanity. <laughs> uh, I don't know, 108. That's a number that will haunt me for my entire life, 108. Why? And the division or whatever it's called. Nope. Um... You know how snipers count kills and they actually count individual kills for snipers and things like that. Uh, like we're involved in unit kills and my hands are on the blood of at least 108 confirmed. Uh, but it wasn't no direct combat sniper shit. I was artillery firing from a distance and all that other shit. It was all hands off. But there yeah. are 108 less people on this planet because I was where I was when I was doing what I did. Well, if you weren't there, Kyle, it might still have happened. Uh, well, yeah, I'm just saying. It just, I mean, that's just nuts. That's just, you know, war is the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Necessary uh, evil when it has to happen, but. That's the 108 you're willing to admit to, yeah? The ones in the crawl space, you don't you don't talk about. No, them. I don't admit to anything like that. But... <laughs> That's why I said I never understand a kill count to a sniper. Why they'd even be happy with numbers, and mm. you know, I didn't like them. I never did like them. You know, my horror stories, my PTSD stories, are the dumbest fucking things in the world. Anyway, human fucking feet. Going next to an impact crater and finding a leg severed mid shin, and there's a foot and a boot basically intact, mm -hmm. and nothing else discernible human within eyesight. Nothing. Yeah. The guy was standing next to an impact crater, so he was two feet away from where it landed and blew up, and it blew up, so his left foot was gone. And pulverized with the rest of them. It just blew God knows in what direction. Didn't leave a blood trail because that got shot so far away. Just a foot laid down next to an impact crater. Uh, got a comment from Collecting Cows. I think this is when you were doing your tenderloin. This is not to do with what you're talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me to take it out of the freezer. And then I saw a thing on this goddamn storm front that went through. Where they had cadaver dogs out. That's well, talk about two cadaver words. dogs out. Two words I cannot fucking stand to hear anymore. Cadaver dogs. Because oh. the tornado damage and they were pulling bodies out of this stuff and they had uh, cadaver dogs out. 
checking these houses. And I am an animal lover, and I am basically an animal rights activist. But, and I've always said I'd rather kill a person than an animal, but this one cadaver dog, this Air Force cadaver dog, we were doing that right before Mount Pinatubu blew up in the Philippines in 1990. Um, They had some massive earthquakes, and I mean massive earthquakes. And some of them little buildings out there, they're kind of sturdy, so they're not rice paper and stuff like that. So they're kind of sturdy, but they're not they're not solid. So these buildings would collapse like this. The walls would just fall down like a house of cards, and they'd just fall down on top of each other. A couple hundred pound walls. Well, we're cleaning up after this uh, massive earthquake that was... Ground Zero was right in this village. And we're cleaning up, and this cadaver dog is identifying this little hut, this little house just going ape shit. We got to get in there. We got to get in there. We got to get in there. And we're running in, and we're picking up these concrete slabs, you know, like 500 pound concrete slabs, three or four guys that get on it, shove part of it off. You know, we're bloody in our knuckles because this dog's indicating so much. So much. We lift three goddamn walls and find the foot of a baby girl. Yeah. Couldn't have been five or six years old. We find the foot of a baby girl. The rest of her is under the next slab. I could have killed that goddamn dog. Goddamn dog. I was just doing his job, Kyle. Image I never want to fucking see. I let go of most of my medals. I won't let go of the humanitarian service I got for that. I got for that. But, uh, oh, God, I wanted to kill that dog. And I wasn't the only one. Because they're not supposed to indicate on corpses. And this, yeah, All right. yeah, it was purple and black corpse. And I was so goddamn mad at that dog. And I just, I got really reminded of that the other day when they were talking about walking cadaver dogs around yeah, these houses. I'm like, oh, I hate cadaver dogs. Surely the word cadaver dog means that it's looking for a dead body. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they pull them out. They they work them through morgues and they're cadaver dogs. And yeah. Darren's backstage. Unless that's from earlier. Right but oh my You've god. You've been discovered, mate. Oh man, this is like seriously bad. Uh, the plot has thickened considerably, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't. Right, so I parked up at the, the woman's house, right? Well, the, the man's house, I suppose. And I knocked on the door, and the woman came to the door, right? So I talked to the woman, and she's told me stuff that she didn't tell me on the phone. She says she says that the, the husband, right, he doesn't even know I'm coming. <laughs> That's what and, I thought when you said earlier on. And, and apparently... He doesn't even know how serious things are. And I'm the one who's going to break the news. And I've got to go, I'm here to save your marriage or something like that. I've got to have your comics. And he's got to agree to the deal. Like whatever She said, whatever you offer him, he will accept because he's daft as a brush, right, she says. So I don't know what. I said, I need to see the comics first. And I'm like, but then she says, um, but make sure you say it right because he's got a bit of a temper. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> So anyway, right, I don't know what to do. I'm going to send you like some uh, phone number and address details in in uh, Facebook. So if I'm not back online in 10 minutes, call the police, okay? <sighs> All right. I'm going Keep in. I'm going, in. I'm, going to do it. I'm going in. Right. Peace. This could be the last thing I hey. say to you. She crossed me out a thousand times. I've got to say, what have I got to say? What did she say? I'm here to save your marriage. Okay, right. Okay, okay. I've got it. Right. Okay, see <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. I think he's being a silly clown, but that's okay. I'm hoping. Sorry to be a downer there. That chaos reminds me of the military stuff, but when I heard that. Yeah, he's going to sort out a deal of some sort. But, yeah, I uh, I don't have many horror stories, but that's my that's honestly my biggest. Well, that's pretty horrible. That's why I didn't want I'm to do it anymore. Too far for that. I wanted to go back like and watch get... my kid grow up. That made me just go, fuck this. I want to go back and watch my kid grow up. 
So, but it didn't stop there because it went on for two more years. But I had enough. I did enough. I did my part. Did you do a fixed term, Kyle? Do you do, do you sign up for so many years and then you you're out? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big long out, long drawn out contractual thing. But I was in, I was out. They tried to keep me in. I was like, nope, I want to watch my kid grow up. I've done enough shit. I did. I enlisted on purpose. Did what I did on purpose. <laughs> chose to go down that road. And when I was down it, I said, fuck it. Because I had a goddamn death wish. I mean, it's, it's I'm not kidding when I say people that go into those forward deployed combat things have fucking 10 screws loose in their head. You know, they're either kids trying to impress their dads and they're just going to go get themselves killed. Or they're just wackadoodle. Now, they, again, that's forward deployed. That's people that choose to go do the stupid shit. Yeah. You know, the average job is just cookie cutter. Non-combat average job is just cookie cutter. And I'm not kidding when I say at least 85% of my active time that I was deployed, I was drunk. I wasn't tipsy. I was fucking drunk. Because when you could be drunk, you got drunk. When you couldn't drink, you couldn't drink a goddamn thing. Sometimes three, six, ten months at a time, but... If I had downtime and it was there and we weren't cleaning or doing the job, it's like, all right, you're done. Drunk. So coping mechanisms for children dealing with that shit. I was the old man of the bunch and we found that foot. I was 23 years old and I was the old man in the bunch. Wow. I was the old man in that bunch. Everybody else around me was 20, 19. You know, and that's just. That's crazy. Yeah. And again, it was most of the downtime was thumbs straight up the ass. Nothing to do, nothing going on. Can't go anywhere, can't do anything. But when the adventure hit, it was high adventure and it was fucking crazy. And then people call me a combat vet and I feel so fucking insulted because I've never for a day said anything more than I had four bad fucking days. I had four make my peace with God. Sorry, I didn't tell my mom by days. My uncle in Vietnam did a two year tour that almost every day of that was like that. My stepdad did four years in World War Two, four years consecutive. That was almost like that for an entire four years. I had a fucking four days. You know, and then they had maybe two weeks of not so good days. You know, I wasn't making my peace with God when we found uh, either of those body parts, but I'll chalk those up to really bad fucking days. But, you know, I only had in four years, I only had a couple of eh, two weeks of four years that I can complain about. You know, and then this stupidity of being shuffled around the world like chess pieces, that was kind of dumb. Break glass in case of war here, show a muscle. Oops, we're going to get drunk. Well, that was so it. Not it was I would never done. Fucking insanity. Well, my, military, my military career was about two weeks in the Church Lads Brigade. <laughs> yeah. I lasted because I have a. Going in, I had this, and I knew it, and it's not good. And I said this. I'm two degrees removed from a serial killer because I have a moral compass that I can turn on and off. That is not a good goddamn thing to have. You know, I'm a pacifist, but if I have to shoot somebody, I'll shoot somebody and then be fine with it. But I have to shoot them. If I don't have to shoot them, I'm going to walk the fuck away. Well. Wow. But I look at those things and I see this John Wayne glorified shit. John Wayne was a jerk off loser. John Wayne was a total jerk off loser. You know, the American icons of machismo are a whole bunch of jerk off losers like John Wayne. Chuck Norris is a jerk off loser. You know, <laughs> the guys that should be heroes are fragile kids that were broken in combat. 
and it's not heroic. There's nothing glorious about it. You know, everybody hears about the 22. That's 22 suicides of fucking, what was it? It's a week. I keep wanting to say a day, but it's 22 suicides a week of military vets. That's fucking ridiculous. Because they take these starry-eyed little kids and put them through a meat grinder. 22, you say? 22 a week? 22 a week. For years on end. That's what the average has been for over 20 years. 22 a week for decades. 22 suicides a week. But then, you know, they, they get these people like fucking... John Wayne portraying it and making it all fancy. Somebody should make a real story where it's just mostly stupid. Yeah. Mostly stupid. With with moments of intensity. Guys. Even in in wartime. Guys. I've I've heard from Darren. Is he all right? I'm here to save his marriage! <laughs> <laughs> you dick waffles. Oh my god. It's <laughs> what a couple oh, of dick waffles. <laughs> Bill's going to be sorry he missed this. I got us good, though. I got us good. <laughs> Was that a good gotcha? Was that a gotcha, Oscar? Yeah, you did, mate. You definitely got us good. You even got Lisa. Lisa was Lisa was listening in. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, the marriage is fine, <laughs> and he doesn't want to sell his comics. Yeah, All right, got, well, let's see the comic books yeah, you got, got there. Yeah, just back the chair up. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Lisa believed it as well. Lisa believed it. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, Lisa was over to you when you came on. First of all, she was laughing about it. <laughs> she was invested in your story. She says, <laughs> "What did you mean, Mr. Prank from Darren and Mark?" <laughs> <laughs> we only planned it all yesterday. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, Mark, you tell the story. So Darren and I worked out we were buying both bidding for comics at the same time. That's box. right. Yeah, I saw it in the yeah. chat. So we both we we talked about we didn't want to bid against each other, so we agreed which lots we were going for and which the other one wouldn't compete on. So Darren won six lots, I won nine lots, uh, and it was in Warwick, which is quite a long drive for me. So Darren said, oh, look, I'm coming down to Hastings tomorrow. Why don't I pick up the comics in Warwick, and I'll come round yours, because it's on the way back to Doncaster. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I'll drop in on the show. So I said, yeah, good idea. He drank this story up, not me. (laughs) <laughs> I am the ass evil monkeys. mastermind. <laughs> you two are a couple of ass monkeys. Just so you know. <laughs> and he's uh, apparently he's got quite a temper. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that. You you, uh, you try working for him, and, and the mark he's always clipping me around the year. Move quicker, oh, yeah. so move quicker. Yeah. Deservedly so, I'm sure. <laughs> hey. But at least he didn't walk in on your Roger and his messes or nothing, huh? <laughs> Sneaky ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's Bill? Where's Bill? He's missed all the fun. He got some yeah. stuff going on at the shop. Right. Yeah, he's got some personal stuff as well. I think his brother-in-law is being arrested for drunk driving. Oh, no. Something like but that. he wasn't drunk. <laughs> He's a trouble magnet. How was the Hastings Hall? So let's see. I I visited two people. The the lady was completely made up. You understand that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm having a word with Claire later. No, don't give Claire ideas. (laughs) Well, if there is troubles in the marriage, I'm happy to buy the comics if it solves it. (laughs) That's... uh... (laughs) So the first, so I went to one in Eastbourne and one in Hastings. And so I got to Eastbourne and they're in his loft, but he's, he's been fixing up his loft. So it's all decked out with wood and there was a loft ladder and a small hatch. Now I'm not small, am I? So no. I had to squeeze up the ladder and squeeze through the hatch. And then we were in his comics den. 
and he had some good stuff, but it was fairly low grade. The, the stuff that was good was low grade. But I tell you what, he had um, all MDCs like uh, Weird War Tales oh, and all oh, the God. Iron Wolf and um, loads of Conan and stuff and um, everything you can think of that's bizarre. Yeah, that's DC from the seventy what seventy seventy one. Okay, he had loads of. I mean, loads oh, of. Yeah, so so nice. he probably had five hundred comics of that era yeah. that I wanted. Oh, yeah. A few earlier ones, a few six, a few Batman's, a few Detectives, yeah. Yeah. some Wonder Woman's from yeah, that era, okay. some Flash. Yeah. Uh, he had a couple of amazing. He had about uh, oh, ten amazing Spider Man's around the one hundred and five. Okay, well, just just sellable. there. Yeah. But he didn't have one hundred and one. No. And um, and then a couple of slightly earlier ones, but so there were things he collected historically, and he just had them in loft forever. Yeah, he bought them, so he bought yeah. them um, to read. He's yeah. a, he says I'm a reader, yeah. and I've ended up with this collection. So anyway, I said, right, you've got 500 comics I want. You've got another 500 Marvel and DC I don't particularly want. I mean, I'd have took them, but I didn't particularly. Yeah. Not, they don't set me on no. fire, you know. So we're talking probably 80s Fantastic Four and Avengers and stuff, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. every collection you buy has got those in. So yeah. there's no point getting excited about them. But then what, what he had done when he was buying his comics, because there was a point in England where they stopped selling them in the newsagents and then he had to go to comic shops. Well, he never realised that. So he was still going to the newsagent and that was when they switched to Panini. You know the Panini? Oh, yeah. So he's been buying mm -hmm. Panini for bloody years, and he had about, well, he had all of them. He had 3,000 Panini ones. Oh, you don't well, want those. They're terrible. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, they're actually mm. not terrible. No, they're quite good, but they're about, you can't sell them. You can't sell them. You can't sell them. They're, they're oh. valueless in terms of resale value. So, uh, and he, all he wanted to do was, he, he, you got to take the Panini, you got to take the Panini. So anyway. Yeah, which are heavy things as well. Oh, they're heavy, they're thick, they fill yeah, the boxes. Yeah. They're, they're, they are at least durable, yeah, and yeah. then they're nice and glossy, and the papers. Yeah, I've got a box full of panini, but they're not resellable. No. So, so I said, right, okay. I says, I'll make you an offer. So I made him an offer, right? Low grade. This is, I mean, I don't think there was a fine among them. No, okay. they were very good on average. Well, let's say there might have been the odd fine, but very good on average, right? But there were some goods. And uh, I, said, I said, I said, I can't pay you much for them. I said, I want them. My kind of comics. I said, I'll give you, remember, I've got to make a profit. Yeah. So I said, I'll give you, I said, I'll give, and I said, I don't want the Panini. I said, I, I'll take them other 500 Marvels that I don't want, but they're pence per copy. They're 10p, 15p a copy, right? But I said, them others, I'll probably give you, I don't know, let's call it a pound, because they're the, the grade. Yeah. So I said, um, I said, right, I'll give you a grand, a grand for everything. Uh, I said, I said, bear in mind, because I talked this through on the phone with him already. So I'd already told him roughly what to expect. And I also told him, and he told me that about the panini. And I said, shall I just rent a van, assuming they were going to do a deal? And he said, oh, no, just come and have a look. Well, it's a long way, obviously. Yeah, so I said, yeah. I said, look, I said, if I'm going to come and rent, a, I could get that American stuff in the car today. Yeah. I said, so I can pay you the money, done, right? But if you're insisting that I get the panini gone, I need to rent a van and come for another day. That's another... 60 quid in fuel yeah. and 150 quid for a van so yeah. you're asking me to outlay 200 quid for comics i wouldn't give you 2p for <laughs> they're just useless you know so he said oh well we're quite a way apart and i said well look give me an idea how far apart are we uh, he said well i'm not sure i want to tell you you might laugh I said, I won't, I won't laugh. I, honestly, I said, I've heard all sorts from yeah, all sorts yeah, of people. Yeah, I've had yeah, this conversation yeah, before. Yeah. Just tell me. He said, all right. Well, I wanted 40 grand. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oh I, I did laugh. I must admit, I did laugh. He <laughs> wants 40 grand. Where the hell's he got that number I don't from? know. Well, what he did was when he was a bit younger, he went round some comic shop he found. And he said, oh, that's my comic. That's my comic. And they were all like 10 pound, 50 pound or whatever. But they were in mint condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his are just... Um. So anyway, I said, look, I'm really sorry, but and actually it was very handy because I'd got the auction stuff in the car. And I said, look, some of the stuff that you'd bought, Mark, yeah. the House of Mystery yeah. and stuff, yeah. House of Secrets, yeah. whichever it was. I said, this guy, the, I'm I'm dropping these off at a friend yeah. tonight. Yeah. And I said, I've got in the car these comics, and I can show you the invoice to show you how much you paid yeah. and the comics, yeah. and I can show them to you, right? Yeah. So I did. 
Yeah. And he took me in the garden for a cup of tea, right? It was a lovely yeah. sunny day. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I showed him and he was like, and his jaw was just dropping and dropping and dropping further and further when he realised that his 40 grand was just no chance. I understand. No chance. Because yours, um, oh, well, that's another story. So the auction... I gave them a right rollicking about the grading. Yeah. And I said, it, look, I said, we can tell from the photos that it's got like multiple yeah, pieces. Yeah, some of those had near mint written on them. And they had near mint written on them. I said, you can't do that. Um, if you want to sell comics, you can't claim they're near mint in an auction because so, we knew. Yeah. But others might not have done. And yeah. if they'd have been trusting it says near mint and bidding accordingly, We've ended up paying more. Or, or other bidders have ended up yeah. paying more because some bidders thought they were near mint. Yeah, and that's exactly. unfair. Well, yeah. Totally... Yeah. So anyway, they took my words and said, "Okay, thank you very much for explaining," and so on. Yeah. So I did. And so anyway, this guy eventually he realised that his comics are not worth that. And I says, "So look, I says, how do you, you know, what's the situation?" He says, "Well, I can't let him go for a grand, not when they're worth 40. <laughs> And I know it was yeah, clear yeah. that it's going to take him. It's going to take him got, some time. It's got to sink in. He's, he's been going to bed at night thinking he's got 40, yeah. 40 grand in his attic. Yeah, he's not going to. He's not going to suddenly adjust to. Yeah. he's only worth a grand. That's right. And and so I've left him and I said, look, I said you've got my number, I've got your number. Give it a week or two, we'll talk. Yeah. And if it, at the end of the day, if I don't buy him, I don't buy him. These deals do come up. It's low grade. Of it's low grade 1970 stuff, they're not common, but they're not uncommon no, either. No. So, yeah, I'm not going to cry about it. But I'd be better off selling them himself, wouldn't he? Really, he'd get the most money if he was selling himself separately. Now, these people yeah. don't want to do it. This guy doesn't know anything, no, about it. he yeah. thinks he's no, exactly. Yeah, well, he, he's, he's got not a clue. So, where's he going to start? Yeah. Selling himself? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Darren, you're gonna come to the states and go out back and have a cup of tea with me out back and pay me a thousand for my whole collection give me five minutes and i'll be on your webcam <laughs> <laughs> i'm just taking the concord <laughs> grab, grab a box then and start showing them oh well, they're in the car but uh, shall i tell you another story about the next collection which which is go on, then. the key bit in the next collection is there's this guy, absolutely. The first guy was lovely, by yeah, the way. Yeah. And the second guy was also lovely. The second guy was 75 years old. Oh, wow. Right? right. But a businessman. Right. And his businessman, uh, actually, the things I'm going to say might give it away. So if they do, then they do. Right. But he's in uh, Hastings, right? And his claim to fame is he used to be a roadie for Queen and Mott the Hoople. <laughs> wow. Uh, for years. And he's just fantastic. And so he's got all this memorabilia from Queen and all the different bands, like Bowie was roadie for and everything like that, right? So loads of stuff. Yes, Scotty, let's go teleport straight into Kyle's <laughs> garage. Yeah. So all this, like, memorabilia. And he said he just bought a load of comics in the past. And, and I said, oh, brilliant. So another loft, but an even more rickety ladder and a smaller hole, right? So I had to squeeze in another loft, right? So I'm in this loft. And in this loft, he has got hundreds and hundreds of rolled up movie posters that he's got. You know, I told you how we got them, right? Well, he gets them for free, basically. But so he's selling them. But he, he does, he does, his business is supplying vintage luggage, like suitcases and stuff mm. like that. You know, all the old worldy stuff, like made of leather and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. often supplies it to film sets. Right. And also, um, uh, there was a was it where did he get it from? Oh god knows. I don't know where he gets it. I think just randomly going out there and buying some antique okay. fairs yeah, and yeah, antique yeah, shops okay, and stuff. Right, yeah. And and he, he said that there was I can't remember what he said, which it was, but it was like Chanel or Louis Vuitton or something were setting up stores everywhere and they wanted to use this yeah. old style. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they just came to his shop and they just said well, there was a, he said there was a, a like a rickety old lady came in and he has a lot of rickety old ladies come in, wasting his time, right? And so um, he thought, oh, another one. Anyway, after about 20 minutes, she came up to the counter and he thought he was going to have to kick her out of the shop. This is years ago. And she said, okay, uh, this is a list of the things I want. And it was everything in his shop. And she said, and when you've got this to us, I'll be telling you what else. And he was on the phone for weeks, phoning up all, all his contacts to get more and more and more. And obviously he made a fortune from it. And he, so he's stuck. The, the paraphernalia that these like 
fashion houses put in stores when they went to yeah. the UK. He yeah. provided all the paraphernalia for that. So I think he's probably made a bloody fortune yeah. in that. But these comics that he bought, he's basically, he's not, he's, he's not read them. He's just, he says, I like the cover. So I was going around like charity shops and stuff. He says, all my clothes are from charity shops and always have been. And I just find these things. I like the cover and I bought them. So I paid practically nothing for them. So you have them for practically nothing, right? <laughs> but the thing is, and this is terrible, and it's terrible, right? So <laughs> they were in some rickety old plastic drawers, and we're in every drawer, and I was going, and they're not sorted at all. They are all bagged but not boarded. Well, actually, they're quite good for condition, but mm. they were much later. So the sort of collection that you get was full of late eighties and nineties junk. But there was a few seventies bits and bobs from Marvel, which I was like, yes, I want. Uh, to cheap price, fantastic, yeah. right? So <laughs> there was, we, he didn't know how many comics there were, so we had a quick guess at how much there were. So we thought there might be um, 1,600 comics. And I said, look, I said, and we went through most of them, and I said, there's nothing in here that's outstanding, and I can't buy in someone else's collection. I said, how much do you want? He said, oh, not very much. I bought them, you know, from charity shops. They've cost me nearly nothing. I says, well, look, I would normally offer an other comic Shops in the UK would also normally cough it. Well, how much would they offer, Mark, for this? 30, 50p a comic. Oh, you're too much. You're going to lose money. 10p. So <laughs> I says, I'll give you 10p each, right? So <laughs> I says, 1,600 comics, I'll give you 160 quid. And he undenied. I said, look, I says, and there was a couple of things in there that I thought I want. One of them might make uh, Kyle smile, but might not end up on Kyle's pile. We'll see. It's a comic you've mentioned before, Kyle, but it's in there. And... Um, so I said, I'll give you 200 then. I'll give you 200, right? So now we're up in his loft, in his loft. And his wife is like two stairs, two floors down. And so this guy, now I've noticed him, when we're looking through stuff, he keeps asking me what my favourite music is. Because, you know, he's a roadie and he's into music. And I tell him, oh, I like Queen, David Bowie and you too and all this. Oh, yeah, he said, they're fantastic. They're honest, the roadie for them. Yeah, yeah. And 10 minutes later, he say. Did I ask you what your favourite movie was? <laughs> oh, goodness. And I'm thinking, okay. something's not right here. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and oh, anyway, goodness. so he ran downstairs. He said, ask my wife about your offer, whether we'll accept it or not. So he disappeared. Five minutes later, he come back up. He says, so are you going to make me an offer? <laughs> um. 200 quid. So he says, I'll ask my wife. So he went back down the ladder and went and found his wife. And he came back later and he says, are you going to make me an offer for these things? <laughs> like, oh my no. God, he's got, got dementia. So anyway, the Twilight Zone. Eventually, eventually. You need to go so to far, the best, so far, the best seller you've had is that fake one that you made up. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, his wife said yes. Okay. <laughs> and he remembered. Right. <laughs> so I paid well, him. Well, reminded him. And so this is a 75-year-old girl. I mean, I'm a fat... Guy, right, but he's a 75 year old guy and he's been a roadie carrying yeah, stuff in yeah, there. Yeah. He's pretty fit and he's still so, got this so he up and down the attic. Getting the he was up and down carrying these comics, so, yeah. Good night, nice. Darren. <laughs> So I know you mentioned a book that I might want on my pile or whatever that may or may not end up coming to me, but if this guy was a roadie for Queen. Please at least throw in one of those 90s throwaway 10p comics on there just think, to say. I don't think we've got any Queen stuff. No, there's no Queen stuff. No, <laughs> I'm just saying, just one of them the 10p comics. comics oh. Just a random comic. Say this came from, from the Queen guy. Queen roadies. No problem. You know, no, if no. I don't get the big fancy one, I can live with that. <laughs> but to get to get a comic from that story from that guy is a story unto itself so just put a little note tuck it in the bag with it and go that's where this came from because that'd be well, super cool to have when i left his house the last thing he did was i went back in to get the last box and he said i want you to have this i said what's this he said it's a book about me and my adventures with queen and he'd written a book he's got a book there's a book about him and he just said i want you to have cool. this and it's a free copy of his book so that's nice. i that's know who you're talking about Okay, hit me. I'm pretty sure I own that book. I am not knowing a name right now, but I'm pretty sure I can go up and fish out that book. The book the book's if in the you're car, talking I'm about, gonna... there's there's a roadie, there's a chick that did the photography or something like that, and there's side stories. But that's what that is, right? 
Yeah, I reckon so. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, well, I'll run and get to the, to the car because I've got to get Mark's stuff out anyway in a minute. But yeah. mm-hmm. the last thing I've got to tell you is really interesting, Mark. From this is a this is a because when you go to an auction to pick up stuff, you quiz them, right? So I said, "What's the story of the collection?" And they said, um, "Well, it's a bloke from Liverpool." Now, li- right, Gray, listen intently, okay? Mark, listen intently. I I figured out whose collection it is. Really? And I think you two. Should be a one in Warwick, the one that we bought the yes, the Warwick auction, right? Now, then, right? So, listen carefully to the clues. (laughs) Is it Jonathan? Hey, is it part of Jonathan's? No, 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 no. So, they said, so I says, it's a guy in Liverpool, all right, and he's getting out of comics, right. And and he said, this isn't all of them that's been in this auction. Yeah, yeah. I said, how much more is there? He said, this lot that's been in this auction is about 20%. So there's 80% more yeah, yeah. of that yeah. stuff to come, right? Yeah. Now, there was a lot in the auction. That means there's a lot. There was a lot. Yeah. So. Liverpool, so big collection. Big collection. Why are they doing it in Warwick? There's plenty of auction houses near Liverpool. True. Maybe he's a bit shrewd. Maybe. Maybe it's the commissions. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. Now then, do you chaps know anyone from Liverpool who's big into comics and getting out of it? I think not. Not getting out of it. I know people like are still in it, but not getting out of it. Getting out of it. Yeah. Who is who? You do obviously do. Well, I, I they wouldn't confirm it, right? right? So I immediately thought I, I know three people from Liverpool who sell comics okay. or have sold comics right. in the past. One of them was a girl who set up her own shop, a young girl, probably about twenty five, with like red hair. She has a YouTube presence for the life of me. I can't remember her name though, but she was fun. I liked her. She was ace, but she got out ages ago, so I eliminated her. The other one, there's a shop in Liverpool called Wolf Comics. And the guy called Paul runs it, and he's lovely. He looks like you, Gray, okay. even, but thin, <laughs> like Handsome real thin, fella, yeah. like like a pencil thin. <laughs> Handsome fella. <laughs> Handsome fella, right? And I think he's probably into metal and stuff like that as well, right? And right. he he's lovely. He's called Paul, and he runs Wolf Comics. Right. So, and I immediately said, because I've met him once or twice, and I said, um, "He's not Paul from Wolf Comics, is it?" And they said. Well, I don't know whether they said no. I think they might have said no or laughed or chuckled or something. Anyway, then I went out to load our boxes into the car, and it was then that I thought, hold on a minute. Right now, all of these ones that we bought have a price on. Yeah, they do, yeah. Now, the price is only a late. It's not like a shop label. There's no brand name. No, it's It's written on. It's a price written on. And I thought, hold on a minute. I know that Paul at Wolf Comics would not do that because he's internet-based. Yeah. And I thought... This is either a physical shop or a convention, dude. Yeah. That's another clue. And there's only one other person I know from Liverpool who might do that. Come on, guys. you got to know. I think he's been doing conventions that you've both... Paul McCartney. No. From the You're meeting. throwing me out. <laughs> he calls himself Paul McCartney. He's, he has a big stall at the London Comic Mart. Oh, is his, is his surname not McCartney? I don't think it is, but it, it's similar. I'm not um, sure his first name's Paul either. I don't know. You threw me off because you said this is a business savvy scouser. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only other person I know of, and I'll do a few more clues, sells on um, Atomic Avenue. No? Okay, then he's he's been to conventions at Golden Orbit. Have you ever been to Golden Orbit? No, Orbit. I've never oh. been to Golden Orbit. They're northern things. Oh, no, they're not. Well, I suppose they are. They I suppose are. they're not. They're, they're, supposed, yeah, they're above yeah, London, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, well, that might be my, if you, why you've not come across it. Yeah. But my suspicion, and it's not confirmed, it's only my suspicion, so I don't think you correct me. There's a chap who runs something called Silver Dollar Comics. Oh, I've heard of them, yeah. And his name is, um, I think his name is Pete Buckingham. Right. But not, don't correct me on that either because it's a memory and my memory might be wrong. Right. Have you heard of him, Gray? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, think, he does, I don't think he does the South. Right. Okay. Well, when I went I've back heard in. Of Silver Dollar Comics. But ah, 
Well, I, when I went back in, because I, I thought of this while I was at the car, I thought, hold on a minute, that's the only place. It's got to be him. So I went back in, and as I was just picking up the last box, I says, it's Silver, Com Silver Dollar. And I didn't say his name. I said, it's Silver Dollar. Someone in the back laughed. And I said, oh. I said, and then just as I walked out the door, I says, was I warm then? And, and the young lad said, very warm. <laughs> well, I reckon, right. Yeah, right. I reckon okay. so. Yeah. yeah. So he's so. Oh. Yeah, Always. but he, he, this guy, like Silver Dollar Comics, right? He is a proper good comic dealer. He is one of the best, in my opinion. Well, I saw the prices that he'd written on the comics, you know, and I thought, well, these are not bad. And they're good, Mark. Yeah. They're good. I mean, I, I when I was showing this bloke, I showed him your because I showed him a couple of mine, mm. but mine uh, were like Suicide Squad from the yeah, 80s. Yeah. So mine went, I wanted to show him stuff from the 70s. Yeah that was in his comics that he yeah. just shown me and the price that they were going yeah. for. So I didn't, I hadn't bought any of those. So I thought, well, I'll show him a few. So I dragged out like a few of your uh, House of House Secrets, Secrets yeah. and said, right, now look at these. And when I was looking at them, I was thinking, holy crap, um, yeah, these aren't bad. Because we couldn't really tell from the photos. It was difficult to tell. Um, there's a mixture. So yeah. I only picked, you bought a big watch. Yeah. I only picked up a yeah. small yeah. watch. Uh, but there's, I think there's very good, fine, and possibly even a very fine in there. Yeah. And I thought, well, but I picked up another watch to show him. I can't remember what it was, but I was thinking, holy crap, these are really Some nice. Some of them did look good. The yeah. Jokers look quite nice. I didn't, didn't pick that one up because that's too expensive. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't want him handling anything. I didn't, no. by the way, he didn't handle them. No. I said, no, these are not mine. And I said, yeah, no one else yeah. touches them. And um, so anyway, but from what little I saw of yours. I was like, wow, this could be all right. Yeah. And I pulled out a few of mine, the Suicide Squads, and they were like very, very high, very fine, yeah. if not mint, yeah. near mint. Um, so I thought that I thought that we could have done quite we a good quite well here. Yeah. If those are, if yeah. mine if mine are any better than VG plus, yeah. I've made I've done well. Well, listen, what there's it's only two short boxes. Yeah. I was very annoyed though, because when I got there, there were two short boxes. But there was also a pile for each of us loose. And I was like, oh, come on. They were stacked, but they were loose. And this, whoever has bagged and boarded them, which would have been, I'm guessing, Silver Dollar. Yeah. He put it upside down, so the flaps at the bottom. Oh, I'd some of them do that. I don't know why. And I don't like that. it because if there's any gunk, that the, uh, yeah, the flap catches yeah, 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 yeah. it. And if you're putting them in, you can catch the flap. Yeah, yeah, and I when I showed this bloody bloke mine, not yours, thankfully, I put mine back in. And I realised that, that it caught the flap on the way in and pushed the bloody Wonder Woman around underneath. I was like, Ugh! anyway, so why don't I go and get some? Yep. Um, um, you need to let me through the house. But yeah. that, that book, I'm pretty sure that book you're talking about was written by the girl that was Freddie Mercury's best friend that took over his estate. Oh, I know who you mean. I'm I know pretty you mean sure it's that girl. Can't remember the can't remember the name. Mary. Yeah. Mary, yeah. someone. I marry, don't know. marry somebody that knows where his ass is. I'm pretty sure that's the book you're talking about. It'll, if if you give us five minutes, we'll be back with some boxes, and then Mark can show some stuff if you want. Mark, I'm keen to see my house. <laughs> my house of secrets 100 and 103, which are the two Bernie Wrights. There you go. Right, come on then. Let's let's go and get some stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the book he's talking about. This is only a portion, yes. Yeah. I screw up my phone if I try and look stuff up and things like that when I'm on this, but I'm pretty sure the book he's talking about was written by that Mary and who took care of Freddie and uh, oh. So I can you picture the whole dinner ready yet, mate? Huh? Is your dinner ready yet? Oh no, that's an hour. And, I had to put that on for an hour and a half. I may be, I may go in and rotate it, but yeah, yeah. Darren's been pulling down some Red Bull. No, it's uh, it's it's twenty past ten now. It's not eleven sixteen p.m. Yeah, it would 10. normally it would be eleven sixteen, but they don't do daylight savings until three weeks after us. Yeah, so in two weeks people. it will be eleven sixteen at this time. Yeah, that's correct. So, uh, I don't know. I've got to mute for a second because 
I'm pushing all these fluids and bouncing around. So I'll be back in 30 seconds. That requires me then to play one of my other videos. Let's play one of these videos while there's only me sitting here. Let's play one of my uploads. One of my adverts. Let's have a look. What should we do? Oh, I played the most of these already. Let's do this one again. This one's cool. Easy way to a tough surfboard. Hey, look who's riding the big one. In tandem. It's Dave. What's happening? Last time I saw him, he was a boardless whole dang, like you and me. What gives, Cut Daddy? How'd you dig up the coins for this mean hunk of wood? A custom job, and I'm doing well to keep myself in smokes. If you think he looks good, wait till you try it. Not now, Dad. Too windy from the smoke. I'd do well to paddle out through the breakers. You'd do well to quit burning up your pocket money on cigarettes. I did, and banked my cash instead. You're looking at what it got me. And man, I never get winded now. Makes sense. I'd trade a smoker's cough for a board like that. Let's give it a try. Maybe in a few months. Smoking doesn't pay. Five cigarettes a day cost $32 or more a year. Ten cigarettes a day cost $64 or more a year. Twenty cigarettes a day cost $128 or more a year. Why risk your health for cigarettes? Champs against odds. Hey, this isn't fair. I failed math. I was so sure I'd passed after putting in that extra study time. What's the use of even trying? You're right, Jack. I'm finished trying to pass that science course I failed. What's the matter with you fellas? Why quit trying? Just because it's a little tough now. Let me tell you a thing or two. You've all heard of Mickey Mantle, of course. Mickey has been fighting a bone disease in his legs since he was a youngster. He's been called Mr. Courage for his perseverance and ability to become a winner in spite of it. And how about Wilma Rudolph? Did you know she had polio as a youngster? And then she became the winner of three Olympic gold medals. It wasn't easy for Wilma to pass her tests, but she did. Champion golfer Ben Hogan survived a terrible bus crash, and doctors said he would never play golf again. But he worked, exercised, and worked some more. Today he's back playing competitive golf and proving that handicaps can be overcome. There are lots of others, like Billy Talbot, Glenn Cunningham, people whose personal courage and perseverance have made them fight against handicaps and overcome them. You kids give up too easily. Say Vic, maybe George is right. I never realised all those sports champs had such a hard time. I guess we should be glad we don't have handicaps like theirs to overcome. Published as a public service in cooperation with the National Social Welfare Assembly, coordinating organization for national health, welfare and recreation agencies of the US. He wants you to be his master, Duke, the super action dog. His mouth opens, legs, head and body can be moved for action. Duke holds the canyon slide in his mighty jaw and glides to the rescue. Duke's hex Q, with real periscope for Duke and you, the perfect spot to plan Duke's adventures. Duke's rescue unit, with emergency lights, portable rescue beam, winch and harness. Kenna, General Mills. Be the master of your own super action dog. Adventure comic books included with most sets. So that was a hell of a productive couple of minutes.
trip taking that comic box back upstairs. Damn near fell on my ass. Of course, I'm talking to nobody right now. What's the chat saying? Strictly mainland guy. Guy's talking about smoking cigars. So. I rotated my meat, took my comics upstairs, flipped my laundry over, got to start cooking potatoes and green beans here in a minute. Don't want to start them too soon though. What an interesting show this must be. God damn, I'm pushing. Nothing, nobody here. Yep, everybody's taking their piss breaks before we bust out more comics and tell more silly ass stories. So as long as somebody's minding the shop. Probably should have taken my camera upstairs and showed around my library while I was up there, but... Not today. Ah, just be patient for a few more minutes, fellas, and the show will take a nice big uptick. Oh. starts to pick my head up. So all I'm proving lately is how big of a pussy I am. <sighs> I tried to be entertaining, G. So. Uh. What you smoke brand? I'm a was a Marlboro Red guy for decades. My wife got me cutting down Marlboro lights. So I've been smoking a lot lately because I've been just shit, I'm hitting nine hours. Don't smoke and I have a surfboard coincidence. That's funny. Nice callback. Nice callback to the Frazetta thing. Uh, uh, I'm getting more done before the show's off today. You got to be quiet now, Graham. Everybody tucked in. Yeah. I'm doing all my cooking, my cleaning, flipped over my laundry, took my box of comics upstairs, tripped on the second to last step up top, damn near ate it, come back downstairs backwards. So. Three skateboards and several boogie boards. Um, all right. Be careful hey, with the box. they back went out break. back for a quickie. We're back for a quickie. Oh. Right, so who's the pitcher and who's the catcher when you two have quickies? So we just Darren's just bought in the comics oh, from. Be um, careful, that's a bit sloppy. Yeah, okay. Do it like that because you know you're. So there. I haven't seen some of the. Well, I haven't seen most of them. So this is from the um, auction in. Squeezing. Well, I think Darren is right. I think these have come from a dealer who knew what he was doing. Kyle, I'm going yes. to spill tea all over his comics. There you go. <laughs> hey, was that that no, book by to. Mary? You just, you... <laughs> was it? Did you grab that book? Was that by Mary? What's her face? Yes. No, it's not. No. Oh, then it's not the one I'm thinking of because the one I'm thinking of is by her. Where's your camera? Is it up there? I don't know. It is the oh, it's no, that's my okay. 
This guy wrote it. He's called Phil John. Phil John. Okay. Did he sign it for you? That is him on the front cover with the beard, looking like Grey Man. Yeah, did he sign it for you? No, he didn't, actually. I would have had him sign it. He probably would have done as well. No, it has a black cover, too, but the one I'm thinking of is like Road Stories. That's what it looks like today. Trees. That's the guy I just met. Trees are the cover story. The cover slingers. Phil John. He looks like a roadie, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> right, so this is one. Oh, they're your buffies. This is the. Oh, uh, that's the mix, isn't it? This is the lot I paid. Um, it was one of the first lots up. Um, and I knew I could sell these. So I'd already checked. So this was um, first lot that came up, second lot that came up, I think. Um, and uh, I've researched this. <clears throat> this is Buffy uh, Series 8. Issue 1, right? Issue 1. Yeah, that that's comic, Buffy number 1. That that's comic, a continuation from the TV show. Yeah, that comic I've seen on eBay for 50 quid. 50 bucks, yeah. Yeah, that's Buffy, Buffy Issue 1. It says Series 8, but the, the TV show went to 7 Series. Yeah. Um, so I checked these up before the auction. Because I know nothing, don't know much about Buffy, uh, but this little set of four here probably worth about forty to fifty quid. I got the entire lot for twenty quid. Well, there you go. Uh, this one here, uh, which is her cutting her own throat, uh, it's worth about twenty quid. Um, then, the, then the rest of them are all Aliens versus Predator, or Alien. And they're in near mint. I could flog these all day on whatnot. This alien stuff goes crazy. I can get three quid each for these. So yeah, I, was I was gonna say you get your money back on the aliens and just profit off the back. Then so and then there's I and these were just in there. These the guys um there's a series caught from Charlton called doomsday plus one plus one that's john Byrne. is it yeah he's priced these up at seven pounds fifty each yeah that's john Byrne's first professional work in your hands right there really wow yeah. i didn't know that. that's before. awesome that's why he's priced them up at seven fifty. yeah <laughs> roger's <laughs> always excited because i gave him the yeah that's john Byrne's first professional these work are their right. mint so and yeah that was a problem yeah, worth saying, 20 john bucks yeah, you know that's so random to be in a batch with aliens and Buffy. Yeah, uh, full set of these. He's priced them up. This is the ones I saw priced up. Brilliant. Nine fifty. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I paid about fifty p a comic for these. Brilliant. Yeah, and uh, issue one's probably worth fifty bucks and high grade, and all the rest of them are twenty a pop. All high grade. These are. Well, they're all, they're well all cut it in half, then you're looking at 25p for issue or 25 bucks for issue one and um 10 to 15 uh, bucks for all the rest of them. Good lot. I mean, nobody else is bidding. I just got it for I was first bidder, wasn't I? Just yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where John yeah. Burns started, right? There. That's John Burns' first original thing. I right didn't there. know that. That's why this is got this guy's price. I don't think he's got number one. I've got two, eight, six. Five. You can see Burns' name on the cover real big. Yeah, you know, the it says it just says Burn on the cover, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah. Out there. Uh, out there. Yeah. I had stuff. I traded it to Roger. I had John Burns stuff from 1972 when he was a when he was a kid, and in that same book was Stan Sakai's first. It was a fanzine. It was Stan Sakai's first drawings published when he was 19. That's your house of secrets. Yeah. Careful. Right. Okay. So this this is the house. Some of the house of secrets stuff. Now these are. This one is because it's Patrick Chris Corner. Oh, Mark! Before you do anything, your wine glass is precariously mm -hmm. underneath there. Um. So we got house of secrets. This one, it's it's probably a four four zero. 
And I've got, that's my third copy of that one. That's the one you showed earlier, isn't it, Gray? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same one. Um, yeah, I think Burn, technically Burns first pro works are in Charlton Bullseye, one of the uh, anthologies, but just full books. That's Burns first full book. I haven't, this one I haven't got, so this will be going into the PC. I haven't got that a previous one either, the Crystal Ball. If one. you like Tarzan and John Carter, the Dark Horse stuff is amazing. And these are rare to find in this collection. Uh, this is, this next this next one is really high grade. I mean, you know, you never see these in this sort of grade. Yeah. You go to a comic mart, you go to London Comic Mart, you'll never see that in that grade. Mm. Yeah. And Gray had to kind of go hush, 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 hush. This is one of my favorite covers. Okay. Um it's absolute cracker. And this this is my third copy of this, and it's the best grade of the lot. Just nice. like this cover. Gray had to kind of go hush hush because everybody went night night. So yeah. if you see something pop up in the chat, that might be him talking to you. Uh, 108. These are fantastic. Look at this one. Yeah, and it's not. There's not many gaps either, is there? No, the I, I, when I saw it, there was one, maybe one or two missing. Yeah. So I've got half of these. So half of these will go into the PC. Yeah. And the other half will be we up for sale. Well, you're going to get your money back on the. Oh, oh, way more than that. Yeah. This one's lower grade. It's still not. I, have I got that? I think I've got that one. What I'm going to have to do is go through and decide whether, whether my uh, existing copy is better or. That's for the, that's a different label, isn't it? Yes, it is. But, but that might be where he's got it for. I don't know. It might be, yeah. I mean, these House of Secrets are fantastic. Um, Excuse me. These are later ones. Oh, I haven't got this one. That's great. Fantastic. This is the first time I'm seeing these guys. Um, I haven't got these, some of these later ones I just haven't got. This one is great. Look at this one. Yeah, it's got everything you want. Everything. <laughs> That's a cover slingers and a half. It's got, it's got, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, it does have a couple of spikes. See you soon, Chaos. Shark. Cardi, that's car that's got Cardi written all over it. Uh, I suspect that's Cardi as well. What's, he does a lot of the House of Secrets. What's Cardi? Nick, Nick Cardi. The the pen lines in that just scream Nick Cardi. Uh, right, and then we're going. So this was the second lot, which was later issues. Um, here is the uh, oh goodness, right so. Uh, this is a fantastic one. This is worth this is worth money, and I've got this already. But this is definitely better grade than the one I've already got. Look at the back of the board. That's Glasgow City Centre. Does that even exist anymore? City Centre Comics. I Glasgow. Yeah. I, I I wonder if he just reuses boards that they call. Yeah, it. probably, probably. Now this next one, guys, is one of the ones that I was excited about. This is House of Secrets 103. It is a classic Bernie Wrightson. In a, in a, if you had this in a 9.8 um, graded, it's, a, it's over $1,000 for this. Um, this is in, we were looking at it, we had a quick look at this, uh, 7075, I think. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, aren't those like his first works? Or no, you're in twenty cents. Yes, they are very early rights. And yeah, they're but you're in twenty cents. He he went back to fifteen barely. I think he, uh, he started in House of Mystery, House of Secrets. Yeah. Um, so look at this one. This is um, Abel. Yeah, that's one of the ones I was excited about. I think I think his first book has a fifteen percent price tag right at the end of seventy one. Uh, this next one is another money book. This is Bernie Wrights and House of Secrets 100. It's not quite as, it's got a bit of um, wear down here, but it's still a cracker. Do you know the significance of these books to a particular grouping of artists? Uh, no, Kyle, what is it? That right there, the books you're holding are the reason the studio came together 
in 1973. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Because he got together with um, two or three others, didn't he? I'm trying to remember. Kaluta, Wrightson, yeah. Jeff Jones, and Barry Windsor Smith. Yeah. Yeah. That would that was how the studio came together was they were doing bits and pieces of those things. I mean, I've got some of these, but these are in much. They're lovely, different. aren't they? They're really They're not lovely. perfect, but they. I mean, this one I haven't got is yeah. one of the ones on my want definitely yeah. want list. Look at the great, I mean, beautiful. It's, it's it's got some spine ticks. Yeah, but it's, it's low, very it, fine, it's, it's, high fine, isn't it? It's going to be fine plus or yeah, yeah. Well, just, I mean, obviously minus. just based on from cover, but nevertheless, yeah. that's all we've got to go on right now. Um, uh, one five four. This is just about one of the last issues. One five three. These are in amazing condition. If some people had known, was that last one a pants copy? These should not have gone for this price. Those are pants copies too, right? Yeah. Uh, no, that's a sense copy. These are sense yeah, copies. Most of them are sent. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't do many pants copies. I was gonna um, say, as I say, if you come across a pencil one, here's a pencil one. Yeah, those are stupid rare. Yeah, you stupid rare because you're at the end of the print run. They're the lower. Yeah, there. I think there's two issues of both yeah. those mystery and secrets. That one does. That's beautiful. Spot, that mate. they did the pencil yeah, price on, on it. Cracking. I mean, these nice ones. Q and S says nice yeah, books. That's, that's super duper high. That's yeah. Based yeah. on what we can see, yeah. that's yeah. super duper high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one or two. I mean, that one as well. And that is a very difficult color to get a nice spine yeah. on, and you yeah. have got a nice yeah. spine there. So this is. Um... Do you want some more? Yeah, that, those are absolutely fantastic. Let me put this down in the really, room. really. Those are hey, worth. don't forget to I grab mean, that I one book. You told me I'm going to win. Those have been in a decent, decent auction house with, with big viewers. They would have. Darren, don't forget to grab the one book. You told me I'm going to want. Yeah, no problem. Right, do you want some more House of Secrets, Mark? Yeah. There's quite there's a huge batch of them. Let me do yeah, that. I know. I've got two big ones. Here we go. That's my safe wave. You got them? Yeah. Oh, oh, this is Nick Cardi. Classic yeah. Nick Cardi cover. I, I sold a really low grade one of these on my whatnot show. Um, this is that is higher grade than my my um, PC copy. Hockey and ice skating. So you know why horror fell out of favor again there at the tail end of the Bronze Age? No, why did it fall out of the tail end of the Bronze Age? Why? Yes, because they all well, stopped. You know, I mean, you can track horror almost in 20-year cycles. In the 30s, you had Nosferatu. In the 50s, there was another horror craze. In the 70s, there was another horror craze, you know, peaking with The Exorcist in 73, 74. Yeah. Yeah. And then interest just kind of waned, and then it didn't come back till the end of the 90s. It's in like a 20-year cycle, and it yeah. got replaced by, that's one thing with Star Wars. The other thing that made it passe was fucking disco. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some of these, that one's not too Because a couple of years after those ended, you had Dazzler yeah. coming out. and Yeah, that's nice. This is very fine for the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. These are amazing. You don't, I mean, I don't know whether if, if you're right. I mean, this guy. And you'll never fine. see you'll oh, never God. see a pants well, copy of any of those. Let me tell you the well, early early issues. When when I very first started the Splat Comics, um, I bought a, a, just an amazing collection. It was crazy. I didn't even know what I'd got. I, I was new. I didn't really know how to grade or anything. And I bought a load of uh, DC. I bought 1,000 comics for £3,000. £3, yeah. £3 a yeah. comic, right? Yeah. But in there was Green Lan uh, first Green Lantern showcase. Is it 22, 3, and 4? Oh, my God. Though. Yeah. All three were in there. The first two atoms was in there. Oh Justice League number one. Avengers number two in very high, very fine. Very fine. Avengers two. Strange Tales Annual One in very fun. We still got all these. No, sold. And and the PS de la Resistance. Are you ready? Tales of Suspense thirty nine. And the guy I sold wow. it to graded it, and it came back five point five. Gordon Bennett. Pen copy. And I had How no, much did you sell them for? Not enough because they should. After I'd sold them, the films happened, and they went wee. 
So I got about a third of what I could have got. I was few, no, a fifth, sorry, a fifth of what I could have got. Um, but nevertheless, so I took this, I knew this collection was pretty good. And basically, it was a consecutive run from that date, all right? So the date would have been what, late 1959, something yeah, like that? Yeah. Every flash from what is flash the first one, 102? Yeah. Kylie's first flash, 102? We might have lost him. But whatever the first one was, that was missing. But the next one was there and every other issue for about 100 issues. The same period, Detective, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Justice League. All there, right? The, the guy had presented me with a list and I bought them based on the list. What? There were five comics that were not on the list. One of them was the Tales of Suspense 39. Mm -hmm. all, all the Marvel, so Avengers 2, Tales of yeah, Suspense 39, yeah. Strange Tales Annual 1, they were not on the list. So they're like freebies. And it wasn't until I got home that I realised they were there. Anyway, so obviously I made more than my money's worth. But when I, at the beginning, I went to do some conventions yeah. in Golden Orbit. Yeah. And I bought some lovely green backing boards, something yeah, as big yeah, as this. Yeah. And I had no idea what I was doing. I marked them up as very fine. So a lot of these comics. Now, this is where the story goes to Silver Dollar Comics. And I think it's called Pete Buckingham. And he, this is the first time he'd seen me at the convention with these and my big backboards with all these keys on. And he walked over and he went through them and he says, very good, very good. These are not, these are not what you think they are. These are very good. And you know what? He was absolutely right, and I was absolutely wrong. Yeah. He absolutely... Well, if, he's, if on, he's put this collection together, this is more like the collection of a collector. Yes, yes. This is not like the collection Th of a this trader. This may even... Do you know what? The priced ones obviously had been on sale. These aren't priced. I, if these are I wonder priced, if these are his personal comments. Could be. And you know what? He was... I don't know. I don't know. This, this is like... You, you have to work quite hard to get... A set of this in this condition. Yeah, you do, you do. Now, um, look, we might be talking about the wrong person. I might have guessed the wrong well, guy. Well, these but these look like a collector's. They do. Set. But he, he was. I think he was probably when I met him. I might have been forty-two, and he might have been two. Right. So that make him sixty something now. Now, when you get into the sixty and above, health becomes a possibility yeah so there's a chance that he's just said you know what i made enough from comics and i'm going to enjoy retirement well there's a chance well, he, fund his retirement. he may want to fund it or it might be health related i do not know i honestly do not know but whatever reason it is these yeah, are yeah, so that fun. if it was health and if this this is 20 percent of the collection i want to see his house of mysteries <laughs> exactly because he'll have them all he will he, he will he will, he'll absolutely this guy's everything. clearly a clearly a, a bronze age horror yeah. fan i mean look yeah. at these yeah this is this is not this is and these aren't priced i think this is somebody's personal collection i reckon so too yeah 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 absolutely absolutely those are not these are not you know if these were sit it sat in a in a store on a london comic mart if Pete, if Pete McCartney had days at London Comic, Mart, yeah, these yeah. would be these would be priced up at 30, 40 quid each. Yeah, easy, easily. If I had them, I would absolutely, yeah. and I would I would be making sure that you, they're, they're you, not discounted. You could even just the, you know some of these. I mean, you, you would look. I mean, that's not perfect. It's probably a fine plus. Yeah, but you you'd look a long time for a fine. Yeah, and it's I'd give it a fine. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. yeah, yeah, okay, fine. And, and I feel it's stricter. a nice looking copy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice, it does present very, very well. Uh, because the edge is great, you know, the edge is just true, yeah, isn't yeah. it? That, that is just stunning. The spine is stunning. There's nothing wrong with it. No, corners are pretty sharp. Yeah, that's probably a, a bottom right hand corner's got an issue, but it's probably an 8.5, an 8.0, very fine. Amazing. Um, and the, here's the other good thing. If my suspicion is correct about who these are from, sometimes when you buy stuff, you get shocks on the inside. But with him, you won't get any shocks on the inside. He right. will have done it properly. Yeah. He will yeah. have checked every yeah. page. Especially if they were for his personal um, yeah. collection. Yeah. Well, it would have been reflected in the price tickets, even, even if the price ticket yeah. on there. Yeah. So he would have, if there was an issue inside, he would have down priced it. So yeah. Yeah. do you want to see the, is Kylie yeah. there? Right. This, oh, great! This, this next, this next lot is 
Um, so this was eight comics. Um, and this I paid the most per comic for these. Uh, this is an absolutely hugely collectible set, um, of which I've got a few, but they're nowhere near as good great as these are. These are phenomenal. Uh, so I paid £10 a comic each for these. Um, wow. Um, just putting them in order. Right. Um, Ooh, a couple more here. And then, uh, oh, have the secret, yeah. So that's not in my piece of podcast, well, maybe better than that. Uh, but it is that one is definitely a stunner. So here is the here is the ones I paid all the money for. Like that one there. Yeah. Um, this was an eight. I paid eight quid for this lot uh, for eight comics, and it is the Joker run from the um, Joker series. That is number two. Now that one. Probably the least good in terms of its grade. So I probably grade that as a fine minus, maybe even a VG plus. Um, this one, I haven't got, but I'm going into the PC. That's again got a couple of mind ticks. Like you just, these finding these is like this. It's largely that edge, is yeah. the. Yeah, he says a crit big crease down the right hand side of the edge. Yeah, there's a couple of but the next one, Oh look, did you see that? No, I didn't see. It. Okay, so that one's probably not too good. Actually, I did see that when I looked at it on the auction. Um that one went over. Amazing. Good God, yeah, that is just and this one as well. That is, I mean. Very fine minus, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That is just wow. It's certainly that, it's fine plus plus plus. And that's not really a fine minus. quick book. Yeah, uh, and this one too. Oh, no, no, no. Do you know what sun shadow is? Yes. No, There's a touch a along bit, that red on the screen, but that shadow. that is that is very fine. Yeah, uh, I'd, I would do very fine, possibly. Yeah, yeah I think I would do yeah. a straight middle yeah. of the road, yeah. very fine on yeah. that. Yeah, and that one's pretty good as well. I mean, very fine, Mark. On this, is just I mean, wow. amazing. Yeah. I'd do a very fine on that. Yeah, I would as well. That's in fact, if it wasn't higher. for that blunt, cool, I'd go very fine plus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, it could even be near mint minus. There's only that one little fault, yeah, really. Oh, this one's special, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is. Maybe. That's CG seeable. That is CG seeable. So this is. Um, That's a nine four. I reckon. What do you reckon, Mark? I mean, we haven't. Once we get over nine zero, oh, I struggle. Um, well, I can't see anything on it. That's why I'm being conservative. <laughs> a little press is going to help us, I think. Yeah. But uh, amazing. That's a beauty. That is an absolute stunner. This one as well. There's, there's, oh, there's a bit, there is a bit scratchy there. Oh, is there? Just a very faint scratchy. I think it's on the cover. Yeah, it's got, got good feel eyes, it, mate. Yeah. It's got good eyes. It's, These are my strong he's, glasses. He's a, good, he's a good grader. That's amazing. I can see the faults, but I don't. I, might, I want them to be higher, so I overgrade. Yeah. I, no, 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 I no, used no, to do. I, no. I was in love with the comics, and I wanted them to be high grade. But this is this one's not a lot wrong with that. What's that? No, that's on. That's on the bag. Mark, this is near mint. Yeah, I that, think it is. And this isn't expensive. This is expensive. This is expensive. It's the, you've got a free eyelash hair in there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to DNA it. We'll have to yeah, DNA, we'll have to DNA it. DNA it. But, I mean, then we'll know who it is. That, it, that is not the, that is that not is the com, That is not the comic that's been sitting in a box in a convention. I don't think. No. Oh God, no. If that had been to convention, that would be the spine it would be screwed. Be gone. It would be screwed. Um, because I tell you one thing that happens at conventions, Mark, and this is why I don't do them, is that customer, some customers know how to treat your comics. 
but some customers don't. And you see them pull a comic up and like they bend it back to look at it yeah. or they bend it forward because they can't reach it. And you know what's also bad? If you sell a third of a box, they all slip down. And even though yeah. they look like they're flat, they're not, they're curved. Yeah. And yeah. that curve yeah. makes yeah. a kink yeah. in the spine. So, that, I mean, these have not been to a convention. Those are no way, no those way. Are, those are somebody's personal. That yeah. is somebody who's that, that one out. for sure. And what a great cover. Just a great, okay. with that's an expensive characters cover. on it. Exactly. Because I checked yeah. these out. I haven't got yeah. this one. This is the last in the series. That was the last that one. That adds to it as well. But also, that, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Joker. Oh, Joker. It is Joker, but. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Here's some detectives. Oh, here's a detective comic lot. This was reasonably priced, wasn't it? I think I got these for. I think these might not be quite as high grade. Right. Okay. Just my first impression. Yeah. They're not bad. Um... It's a bit of a mixed bag, I'd say. These are the um, bullet bullet uh, bullet ones. They're double sized or something, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're thicker. This, this bullet bullet thing here, where they went to a dollar. Ah, uh, yeah, but I think they went to a dollar because they were double sized. Yeah. Hey, Biggie. Not bad. They're hard to get um, in any kind of good grade. These thick ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, got some, but I mean. I see these quite yeah. frequently. They're never like this. Actually, I'll tell you what. I've been meaning to have a conversation on the stream. And since I'm sat here and we're doing this, I might as well have it. So from a um, selling perspective, the, I, I want the these are all PCs. I they're beautiful, aren't they? They're beautiful. I wanted to sort of make the distinction between, because the way I run yes. Splat Comics, yeah. right, there's a distinction. There's a, there's, a, there's a split of comic customers. And I, I, just for the purposes of this conversation, the split is CGCers yeah. and non CGCers, right? Now, CGCers, every comic they look at, they look at with the eye of a 9.8, 9.6, 9, every comic they look at. Non CGCers look at near mint, very fine, fine. That's my grading. So those guys over here are happy whether they get a 9.8 or a 9.0 that's described as a near mint. These guys, they're thinking CGC. They want 9.6s. They're not happy with a 9.0, 9.2, 9.4, because they want to CGC it. Now then, here's the question. If you're just listing like I am, I don't. You, you do on yours. You do the points. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Here's the question. And I've had to ask myself this question. Who do I want to sell to? Do I want to sell to the CGCers no. or do I want to sell to everybody else? I want to sell to everybody else. I want to sell to everybody else. Because that's me. I've got no intention of CGC me. I might CGC one or two of those jokers. Yeah. But um, I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm, I'm not going to get that CGC. Yeah. Uh, but I'm delighted that it's, you know, because th you can pick these up for probably three or four pounds in a low grade. Yeah. But yeah. you won't pick them up in that condition. No, no. Uh, it just won't. You yeah. won't see them because they'll have been in a box forever. Yeah. Um, you know, even in a fine plus, you know, you're not. It, it's meant to got some spot ticks. Yes, yes. It's got a slight corner crunch. Yeah. But you know, when I see these, they look. You know, they've got creases. Yeah. They, yeah. You know, yeah. So the, the carrying the conversation just a little bit further forward is. So if you're a CGC, you're probably not going to buy it. You're not going to buy it. So no. number one, you don't get the sale. But number two, if you do get the sale, you'll get a complaint. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you go the other way, you'll get more sales, hardly any complaints, but the same money. Yeah. The same money. Yeah. Now, you know, that's why I've got my 9.8 stickers. Yeah. Those are for ones. You know that one we've said, that is a secret. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of thing I put a 9.8. They're quite on. rare, those. Incredibly rare. Incre so I very rarely use it. And I'm not sure whether I'm doing a good or a bad thing. I haven't yet decided. Because I have sold a few, I've never had a complaint, and I don't. I only double the price of a near mint, you know. So, but if I was a CGCer, and a and a comic shop like me had done the work of saying they're my nine point eight, so that takes a lot of the risk away of buying what you think's a nine point eight and CGC, and it comes back nine point four. If I've done, I think that my nine point eight would come back nine point six or nine point eight. Yeah. So it okay. you, you're in the better. You, you're slimming it down a bit. I won't grade anything higher than nine. You see. Yeah, that's well, that's right. So 
So on my site, I don't say anything's higher than but a that, nine. But that means you're giving people incredibly good deals on higher graded ones that you're yes. graded nine because you would price it as a nine. Yes, I will. So yeah. you're effectively giving away money, which is fine. I am, but I also I also say that if you disagree with my grade, I'll refund you. Yes, but they're, these are higher. They're not going to say, no. oh, <laughs> I, I want the money back. It's too good. It's better That's than your true. grade. That's true. <laughs> but it is horses for courses. Yeah. And there's no right and there's no wrong. Each seller has to make their own decisions, yeah. you know. But yeah. the good thing is, if you've got all the information in front of you, you can make the best decisions. So your mate has priced that at 29 quid. I know. Let's have a look at it. It's not bad. Oh, I can see why he has. There are, my, you know, them little micro chips, yeah. just a couple at the top. End of the foot cover. Mm -hmm. There's one little tiny uh, spine tick. I saw these two. I specifically saw these two because that's the first clay. Oh, thing. look, there's a two oh, little yeah, micro there tears yeah. there and there. Yeah, yeah. But that is, I would say that's very fine all day long. Yeah. That would be, and, yeah. And it's, and if it wasn't for those two, I'd be putting yeah. it near mint. And this is the first clay face three in a similar grade. I mean, he's priced that at 29 quid as well. That That to me looks initially better. Yeah, that, that's, the oh, price, that, that's the money book. Right, there's only one tiny bit of a blemish still near me. Oh, he's good. This guy is a very good grader. <laughs> still near me. Now, now I'm pleased you've finally learned. <laughs> now, there is there, but I will confess, you know, in my stock, there's a there was a lot of stock, and I, um, when I decided that I was a rubbish grader maybe five years ago. I thought, right, what do I do? Do I go back and regrade everything? Which would take time and effort and pain and stress for no income because I'm dropping the prices and they're not, you know. Or do I just do a 50% sell and get rid of them? And then because they're half price, if I'm one grade off, people are still sort of, well, it's okay, you know. So I took that decision to do the discount and just blow them through to avoid doing the work. But there are still stragglers still left in those boxes somewhere now, when I did do the regrade, I actually did regrade the DC. The stragglers are in the Marvel. There aren't many left because Marvel's, wow, yeah, that's so. Yeah. But there are still some ones, and I someone orders them, and I pull it up, and I go, oh, Darren, no, that's an old days one. Oh, and actually, I will usually put a note on and say, I'm giving, I'll put your loyalty points on, and you have this one for free, and so on, because I know when I've made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. And it's a mistake of not knowing how to grade five or ten years ago. But yeah. That's the mistake. Yeah. But these days, every new comic I grade is what you're seeing here on this table with my critique. That's what you see. Uh, he's a good mind. grader, so if you buy from Splat Comics, you can get an accurate grader. Thank you very much. Checks in the post. <laughs> <laughs> that's crap. That is, I think he's not far off on the pricing of that. That's a bit low. To get something like that is just, you know what? There are collectors out there, when you get a comic this good, Price doesn't matter. No, no within, exactly. within a within reason. Yeah, because they'll never matter. see one like that. They'd see, they'll you be know, like you. They'll have that ability, and they'll just go shit. Yeah, that's the one. I want it. You know, I and they'll just hand it to you, and they won't say, "I'll give you this," or get. They'll say, "Give me that." Yeah, they'll just take whatever price is yeah. on it. Yeah, uh, but that's not going anywhere on the Batman collection. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> um, these ones he's selling. These ones he's um, yeah, because that's got. That's why he's got this at four quid. You can yeah. see this is guy yeah. knows what he knows, doesn't he? You know, he here knows. you go. Twenty nine quid. I mean, that's fairly obvious though. It's a tear in it. So, <laughs> but nevertheless, me in my old days, I was yeah, near me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, again, <laughs> he's right at fifteen. It's um, the corners are. And there's a bit of wear down here, so but it's not bad. Isn't that one a bit of a key? Yes, it is. Um, Mm. This mm, bottom end fine, yeah, yeah. But I don't think yeah. it's bad enough to get very, very good. Plus, I think it's bottom end fine. Yeah, but that bit of rubbing there, Texas. Yeah, away, exactly. Yeah. That's the only real yeah. major fault. Yeah, but that one. Um, he's got that one of the ten. What What is the story of that as a key? Carl, uh, Carl Kyle will know. Kyle. Is this um the Razal Gold woman? Huh? Is that Razal Gold? Uh, daughter, daughter. Ta Talia. Yeah, Talia. Oh. But is it 
Is it like first appearance no, or something no, special? No, our first appearance is like 242. Yeah. What number is that one? To 448. So it's quite a while after then, yeah. yeah. Must have, but nevertheless, she's in it. It's uh, Batman, Batman 232, not Detective 232. Batman 232. Oh, oh, right. So actually, that's probably that's the same probably about then. Period, yeah. yeah. Um, that's probably yeah. early, but it's like Batman. Um, she, it's like, like Batman 199. She yeah. makes a kind of a cover appearance, and then like in 401, she fully appears, and then or then 401 and Detective, she fully appears. I reckon you came late to the party at Splatmark because I had every single issue in bloody good great. Actually, I do have another set. I, I missed them. I think you, you, you I think, um, because I've been, go, I've been going for a while, and I don't know how you first came across me. Was it on Facebook? Oh, it's through Gray. Oh, it's through Gray, wasn't it? Thank you, Gray. Check in the post. Gray, <laughs> I've got to rest my meat. Are you guys going to watch me rest? Oh, you need to check him out. Oh, fabulous. Thank you, Gray. What's that there? Look, it's like a six. It's very, very faint. Is it a pencil yeah, six somebody, or is it somebody, something somebody, you somebody took off? Somebody's penciled a six on it. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. It's only faint, it's... though. That, I don't know. That looks. I hmm, don't know. Oh, and that guy, the you know, the Rosie. This is guy. the first silver. This is the first appearance of Manhunter in the Silver Age. The, the Rosie guy on the phone. He was saying, don't worry, there's some sticky labels on them, but I'm steaming them off with the kettle. <laughs> I said, no, don't touch. I said, put them, leave them alone, don't touch. Anyway, when I got there, there was nothing in there that was important. So I was like, no. Yeah, that one's a bit rougher on the top. Yeah, that, for me, that's a very good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but it is a key, unfortunately. What, what's the key bit of it? It's uh, the first appearance of Silver Age Manhunter. Oh, oh, is it like in a backup strip? Yeah. Ah, cool, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and another one, uh, but these are such. I mean, even so, you know, even if, uh, I'll tell you to be honest, the VG plus is on people, you know, you go to a convention, they'll, all be, they'll yeah. be three O's, three fives, exactly. Yeah, they were could be well, number one, because they found them like that, and number two, because they've been going to that same convention again and again and again, slowly getting downgraded by customers and transport to yeah. and lifting in and yeah. lifting out. Yeah. It all has an impact, and that, honest to god, that is the biggest reason I don't have a bricks and mortar shop. Or and I no longer do any exhibitions or conventions is so because only I touch the comics. Yeah. So if I'm knacker one, it's my fault. Yeah. And then, but I I rarely knacker one, and uh, they maintain their integrity and therefore they maintain their value. Yeah. And yeah, so okay. you know, if I can make sure that the packing process is secure and they arrive, Royal Mail's let me down once or twice by dropping them, you know, from a very high height, it seems. But if they get to the customer in the condition that they left my house, and my house, they are in the condition on the photo, yeah. I'm done. I've done my job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, what's this here? There's something bad going on there. Quite a bit of it. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. That's a very big... Yeah, 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 I agree. Because of that. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, so mixed mixed with those those two those two he priced at twenty nine quid were the best ones. Yeah, but nevertheless, still a cracking deal, a cracking oh. deal. So those, how many detectives I got there? Forty quid. I, I can guarantee you that first clay face in that condition is worth forty quid. There's uh, there's only modern Spider Man, which I'm. Hey, congrats, Jack. Got the. Uh... Here we go. This is the last batch of what I would call interesting. You may disagree. Biggie got the Hulk 181 he was looking for. Oh, here you go, Kyle. Here's your stuff. Heard you was putting out some massively good deals there, Biggie. So that was kind of cool you got that. Saw some of Nama's boxes. Okay, right. Kyle, so you, you got a couple of pences in there, I hope. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, like, I'm not sure I should be sending to the either. Hey, either. here's a fun one. Hold that one up. Oh, that's not 97. I thought that was 97. Do you know what he's asked me to do, Mark? You weren't there last week. No. No, it wasn't last week. Do, do, God almighty. He has asked me to get a near mint defenders. What number? 92. 
Yeah. And tell Mark what you've got me to do. Autograph it. Do art on it. Doodle on it. Whatever you feel like doing. Personalize Sacrament. it. <laughs> Sacrament. As 91, we're close, but no cigar. Oh, I thought she was going to come up with a 97. I just saw Devil Slayer on there. Devil Slayer that appears in 97. Where did he first appear? Who? Devil Slayer. No first idea. appears in De first appears in Marvel and Defenders ninety seven. Uh, that's near mint, Mark. Yeah, it is. That's near mint. I mean, yeah, my gray nose have some trivial issues with the alignment of the cover, but I wouldn't. That's near mint all the way. Um, he came from Atlas Seaboard. He was one of the Atlas Seaboard characters, and they brought him over to Marvel. So that's the first one which gets um, titled as New Defenders. So that's yeah. the first uh, New Defenders. Demon Hunter. Yep. Is it what's the condition like? Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Yeah, all... That's not that's very nice. Look at the spine. Yeah, these, these are all these are all cracking. There's... I've promised half of wow. these to I've promised half of these to Kyle. These are near these are high grade, Kyle. Yeah. I would stick a night near mint sticker on it. I wouldn't mention that because it would get picked up in the photo, and yeah. I think it's fairly trivial. Yeah. That to me, that spine is oh, it's that's an in that the integrity is there as yeah. much as you sharp, could ever want it sharp, to be. Isn't it? Yeah, that spine's beautiful. He's selling these ones, so... That one's got no sticker, though. No, that's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Um, there was a while ago... You've heard of Silver Acre, obviously. Yeah, there was a while well, I buy from Silver Acre. I buy my bags of boards from that. Yeah, I know I need that one. I know you do. It's on your list. And it's a pence, too. It, it is. is. <laughs> I think it was about eight years ago, Silver Acre's convention stock came up on eBay. And he had a lot of key sort of key comics in there, but I think that it obviously over the years degraded. And he, I think he's probably packed in conventions now, was he? Yes. Now, interestingly, his son appeared on Whatnot. Oh, did he really? He did. And I I logged in um, and I bought quite a lot of because I know the Silver Acre prices. Right. And they're, right. they're, they're too they're generally a bit high for me. Touch on the high side, yeah. Yeah. So I know you use them as that, a guide. Th but, they're my starting point. Uh, but anyway, I was doing whatnot, he was selling them for way less than these what um, you list prices. And I bought right. a bunch and he was on about three times and they stopped. Be right, and I'll tell you why. Because I've looked at your whatnots, right? And I thought, do I want to do whatnots? And I can't, I can't do it. I can't stomach no. it because I tell you why, Mark. Because you've got beautiful comics, and I would have beautiful comics, and um, there's no competition. There's only it's either not sold or there's one person interested. So the price you put on it is the price it sells. Occasionally you get to, people, but, yeah. but it's not that frequent. But I want a comic to. I want to be able to price a ten pound comic at a pound, and it goes two, three, four, five, and then stops. Now the big, eight, the so. big boys do that. So there's a guy, guy. So I was late on this evening actually, because there's a guy called Unlimited, um, Unlimited Comics. So I think he's, um, I've, de I've dealt with him a few times. Yeah, it's a good guy, and he um, he starts everything at a pound. Right, and and he's up. What's and, his he viewers sell like? for a pound? Has he got a load of viewers? Has he got oh, more than yeah, 20? loads. He gets about. Right. He goes on, and because he does bargain, you know, because. Uh, so he's just bought a big collection. Right. So he goes, I've just bought a big collection. I'm starting everything at a pound. I'm yeah. just pulling them out of the box. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. showing them to you. So, yeah. I mean, he goes to crack. Get, I, I bought a load off him last night, and yeah. I bought some tonight. Yeah. So he, he brings out, you know, and he goes, oh, signed books. Uh, and we got um, Mike Mignola and, and somebody else. I, go, I haven't got a Mike Mignola signature. So, the, you know, when you list your comics pre auction uh, he doesn't do he, that. He just do, he doesn't do that. He just so goes, he doesn't know what's coming next. No. Almost. He's bought a collection. Right. He knows how much he's paid for the right. collection. Right. He get. He right. knows he gets a lot of viewers. Yeah. So yeah. he trusts that he's going to get a decent... If and he, got to, got to, to be honest, he's probably done what you've done. Yeah. He's probably bought the collection yeah. for 30p a comic. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he's going, yeah. okay, it's assigned Mike Mignola... Pound, I bought it for eight. Yeah, which is yeah. a fucking ridiculously low sum of money. But he doesn't care. Yeah, because he's just yeah. bought this collection. Yeah, he's just some, turning his cash. Some people just want to turn cash, and it's not a bad mechanism. It really isn't. I mean, 
to be honest, what am I doing when I do my discount sales? Yeah. At that stage, I am turning cash. You know, he which is yeah. what he's just paid whatever it is, I don't know, yeah. two grand for the 20 boxes or something. Yeah. yeah. So he just gets a box out and he goes, yeah. and he doesn't know what he's, he doesn't know what he's pulling out. He goes, oh, it's a signed book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are all yeah. signed books. I got a Mike Mignola for eight quid. I got yeah. a um, Joe Casada first DC comic. It's called The Ray. Um, I've heard of The Ray. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've got signed by Joe Casada on front with great I've, signatures. I've got it signed. <laughs> uh, eight quid. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, at Jonathan Ross. He had a Jonathan Ross. Really? Jonathan <laughs> Ross has done a comic. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Uh, it's called The Turf or The Somebody being with the T. Anyway, yeah. um, crap. But this, <laughs> this, this was signed by Jonathan Ross. Four yeah. quid. Well, did, were you there? Sorry to change like, the quick tangent. Were you there when I told Gray? Gray, you're asleep. You got your eyes open. <laughs> Give us a wave. But that uh, Johnny Vegas was in 2000 AD. Did you know that? I think I did know that. And, and he's, he's as Judge Vegas. Anyway, I looked it up. It's issue number one, 1933, Gray. Issue 1933. So we've got to get that. <laughs> I well, I'm, sure, I don't I'm have showing it. all these beautiful defenders. And they're, all in, they're all in. Isn't that a kid? The next one you've got on his file. It's the ball killer. Yeah. It's not yeah, that's nice. These, these are all nice. That's a very... That, do you know what I think? I was going to say very fine. I think I might say near mint actually. Yeah, it's, it's then, really only for that little bit there, but it's trivial. It's so trivial. Yeah. That's near mint. Yeah. That's near mint. Yeah, these are fantastic. This one just looks near mint, is it? Good God. Yeah. Amazing. Do you know what? That's bloody. Oh shit, look. Uh, yeah, a little, a little. There's a tiny a little micro tear there. there. If it hadn't, it's still near mint. There's no question about that. But it's if, if it wasn't whether it's that, a nine zero or a nine four, if that wasn't there, that's CG civil. Yeah, yeah, that's a beauty. That is full killer. Cracker, absolute cracker. Full killer, nice. I learned my lesson with CGC the hard way. Here's oh. one for you. Have you ever seen the movie Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? Yeah. Yes. The pizza delivery guy that gets blown by the jewelry thief chicks? Yes. That's Joe Casada. Is it really? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I learned my lesson hard with CGC because you know that's £3,000 for yeah, a thousand yeah, really old yeah. ones. Paul from Wolf Comics came to my house. Right. This is when I lived in Nottingham. Okay. And I, because I said, Paul, I want to CGC some. And he sends a lot to CGC. Yeah, that a lot okay. of his business is right. CGC. Okay. He, he largely CGCs modern books and brings them back 9.8s all the time. 9.8 this, 9. And he's got 10s as well. He's got. He bought a collection that was pristine a while back, he told me about. So I said, Paul, come and tell me what I should send. And we went through the stuff together and we sent a load. And we came back and was quite impressed with a lot of it. But it was just... Um, an act of love, really, because they were like Batmans that came back like six and seven and seven, but old ones, like like those ones in the detective. And I thought that's, that's great. great, you know what? But they never sold. They just whatever price I put on them, I then so I found that the ones that did sell had one of two characteristics: they were either very high nines. Mm -hmm. Or they were a key appearance, or yeah, yeah they were a key comic, or even better, both high yeah, nines and yeah, a key. Yeah. But if it's not a key, yeah, and it's not a high nine, yeah, pfft. yeah, because, and I wouldn't either, because if I'm a collector, I'm going to go well. I'm going to count my raw copy because my raw copy may be better than your graded copy. Yes, yeah, and I'm going to pay a lot less for my raw copy. Yes, yes, and you know what happened is when I got to about. 40% off. A guy in Ireland bought every single CG I had all at once. All of them. And, yeah. and I they were less. They were they got down to the price where it was I probably got the money back from the act of the sending to CGC because I had $25 a yeah, book or something yeah, and the yeah, postage. Yeah, yeah. I probably got that bit back, yeah. but effectively got the books for free. Do you know what? I was happy because they've been there for sale for so long, no movement, loads of discount. I was delighted when he bought them all. Yeah. I was. And, yeah. and from that day, I said, I might CGC, but it has to be high nine or key. I'll not do it. Interesting. I think mm. that's probably right. Yeah. Hey, Darren, what's the book you need to show me? 
you told him he had a book that you got. Oh, it's in. Okay, so it's in the. You know the roadie guy. So the roadie guy sold me yeah. six hundred comics, all jumbled up like that set I showed Gray the other night, all jumbled up, complete mess. Yeah, I'm not telling you what it is because I'll show you on probably next week's show. But you have mentioned it before. Now I don't know if it's valuable or not, but I know you've mentioned it before, and I didn't have it, but now I have. And not only do I have it, I've got one, two, three, four, five of the set. I'll show you next week. Well, what is it? Not telling you. <laughs> well, don't tell me. You got five issues of one, or is it a five issue series? Or no, I don't. I don't even know because it's a it's a it's a series I know nothing about. But you brought it up in a past week. And, and it's going to give you something to stay glued to the show for for another few days until I show you next week. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here thinking a five issue series and it's modern stuff like Penance Relentless, but. <laughs> well, it's going to have to puzzle you for another no, seven I, days. I think it's going to be more classic than that. Well, okay, I'll give you a clue. It's not Marvel and it's not DC. So, mm, so there, caliber game. caliber presents one. Not telling you anymore. You can stop fishing for clues. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty much caliber presents one or the tick. I mean, because I'm looking for the tick. I'm always on the lookout for the tick. Not telling you anything. You get no clues. <laughs> well, it's not Marvel or DC, so I know it's not like a silver <laughs> silver <laughs> issue. I'm looking for. I, 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 I didn't buy any yeah, the only indies I'm looking for are the tick, and that's about it. <laughs> Seven well, days to go. <laughs> he's been cruel. <laughs> to be kind. <laughs> and if it come from, like I said, if it come from that queen guy, that'd be awesome. But it did. So, it did because it's in the car now, and that's the only yeah. stuff that's in the car. All right. now. Well, you can't torture me like this. You gotta well, I'm gonna do so tough. <laughs> You're going to have to watch back. You, you were allowed your one torture this week, shows, Kyle, and uh, work out what it is you mentioned. I'm going to torture you to the same level I tortured Lisa tonight when she was invested in the story and she was on tenterhooks. Not well, you realize you. we're invested in that too, so it's a double torture. <laughs> now, seriously, not? I mean, it's if it's not Marvel or DC, and all I'm looking for is uh, the tech. I want you, you and Gray, to score me and Mark, our evil geniuses, out of ten for our little boy. Oh, a twelve! You got a twelve. <laughs> that was fun. That was an interest. I never, it never crossed my mind you were there at Mark's. Not, not even a little <laughs> I bit. Wasn't, I was really driving it to his, <laughs> and I was when I said I'm in the drive. I really was parked outside, but I was going to say I was. I'd sort of, you know, you rehearse these things so many times, right? I was going to say, if I'd have been calm, because you know you can, so because I'd not written down the script, so I was going to say, what she's told me on the phone is, there's a load of um, old DC horror in this guy's collection, so I thought of Gray and Mark for that, and there's also a load of Flash Gordon, and Mark would love that, so I've got to go buy it. I was going to say that, <laughs> but I thought if I said those two things, you guys, You'd when I was probably like, give oh, it away. That sounds like you, Mark. He could burst through yeah. the door already. Yeah, yeah. you, you played it perfectly fine. <laughs> about Bronze Age horror or Flash Gordon. Yeah, she yeah. would not. <laughs> she doesn't know that. She'd have just got there's a load of old comics. <laughs> anyway, right. Listen. Give me a I've timeline. Silver, time. bronze. <laughs> Silver Age, Bronze Age. Say again. Silver Age, Bronze yeah, Age, okay. 60s, 70s, 80s. You're not going to get anything. You know, I'm not going to give in. <laughs> so, listen, guys, I've got a three-hour drive to get home tonight, and it's, what is it, well, one in the morning or something? Ah, oh, I figured you'd just shag up with Mark. Mark. Two of them get home, yeah? Yeah. So, I I'm going to... I'm a bed and food, but he doesn't want it. Like Rainman goes, thank you so much. Your hospitality is very much grateful, the refused <laughs> yeah that would have been fun you should have gone further and hit the doorbell and mark says what are you doing here <laughs> well the plan was my wife was meant to answer the doorbell but she's gone to bed <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because the other thing that i was thinking of doing is you know gray you know when i've walked you around the house with my camera i was going to do a live um i was going to do a live collection buying 
and, and I was going to go up to the door with the camera and knock on the door and then not film your wife's face, say, for confidentiality reasons. And if she'd been, like, well-scripted and stuff, we could have had a conversation. The conversation I told you had happened, we could have scripted that and had that conversation on the camera. Yeah. And that would have been hilarious, I thought. So, all right, I'm going to pull something out of retirement here in just a second. But uh, let's go with the Darren, you're an ass monkey. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. And after almost a year in mothballs, Mark, you bastard. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's taken a bit. We, we did a good job there. I, I used to put get, it right there. <laughs> I, I used to get that virtually weekly. Um, but but we, we've had a we've had a we've had a that's my first bastard for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. The first All bastard of 2024. Place. I couldn't help but get mad at him. He'd go to these auctions and get some of the coolest shit. <laughs> Dirt I cheap say, guys, be like I you, you, you are getting some cracking defenders. Yeah. These are high grade stuff. <laughs> I might have only paid twenty quid for these, but these are not pounds of comics. These no. are hey these Mark, are to 15 Mark, comics. Mark, you have my list of the ones I need, right? But you sent me the list of the you saw, you sent me the yeah. list of about seven of these. You have the list of the ones I need, not inside the ones I need, but one of the issues I have two of. Why don't you autograph one of those for me too? <laughs> <laughs> Sacrilege! <laughs> I, I know I'm happy to do that. I don't, I don't mind. I, I'm happy to have my um, signature. Even there. though I've got your autograph a couple of times, but yeah, I okay. I would not mind adding a personalized one. And again, I don't care. You can write fuck all on it you want. You can doodle on it. You can decoupage it. If it's a personal gift from you, you can just put a little dot with your signature on it real tiny. Oh, you, anything that strikes your artistic fancy that makes it unique to my collection. Yeah, that's very true. And you can't flog it off or sell, give it, send it to anybody else. Right. I think we're logging off, guys, because he's yeah. got three hours to drive. <laughs> I so, swore at the beginning of the show there's no way in hell I'd do three nights and three hours in a row. I did it again. <laughs> yeah, we've been like really hitting it all the time. Yeah, this is how much dancing you get. All right, there you go. You get a few fingertips. Oh, shit. Give it a look.